are live. And Brother Neil Frazier in the house. I see you just Brother popped Brian. in. <laughs> I see How you. I see you. I see you. I'm doing good. Let me open the screen so we can okay. show you. Okay. Here we go. Hey, did you get that last chance uh, mission I sent you? Yes, I got the illustrations and everything. And um, they're fabulous. Okay. Yep. I mean, the one I just sent you um, about you the just... God at your shack. I sent it on your on your uh, messenger real quick. I've okay. sent you this image before. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I, I just wanted to use that to uh, start out the program. But hey, man, how you doing, man? Busy I'm week, doing huh? good, man. Yeah, flowing, man. Just flowing the way I love it, you know? I love yeah. to have stuff to me and, and just, you know, when you wake up every day, you 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 have um okay, let me see this image here. Okay. Okay. It's gonna take you a second for me to, Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take a second for me to get it over there. Hold on one second. Let's just okay. keep talking. All yeah. right, do you think? Yeah, so um <clears throat> man, you guys Friday was a highlight of my life. <laughs> that was you know, I was like a little boy, just so happy and giddy, you know, and I, and I sent it to just about everybody I know. Wow. Facebook, Instagram, and uh, I was I was just so happy. And I, I was just so bubbly happy because <laughs> it, <laughs> it validated <laughs> and affirmed what the creator has always said to us and what the creative spirit has always shown us. And right. that, that mother spirit of wisdom is unparalleled in the universe. And right. uh, I, I was just so overjoyed because again, brother, I told you this, that uh, out of all the people in the world, the creator chose you to, to bring our queen mother who, you know, a lot of times what black people don't realize is here, here we have a scholar, a living scholar amongst us, a woman who is capable of being the president of a black universe. I'm not talking about no HBCU. I'm talking about a real institution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and here, here she is talking to us like we all are her children, right? Mm -hmm. and, this, and this is this is the thing that's been lost with our, our queen mothers and our queens and why our young women need to see her and right. hear her and why she has been hidden. Okay. Now, now to me, she's uh her message is just as important as someone like Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Of course. And yeah, and, and see, they hide our real queen mothers because they don't want this image. Now, I mean, they don't want the wisdom and the knowledge, first of all, but they don't want this image out there. And in, and in this uh, white male misogynistic society we live in, they definitely do not want this out there. Right. Because as you know, they make a lot of money off of our, our women twerking and being in these videos and stuff. Exactly. And creating exactly. Image. But yeah, brother, I want to thank you, man, because she, <laughs> has, like I said, she validated uh, something almost 28 years ago. Uh, she reminded me of a, a professor of mine. And I, I got to tell this story real quick, Lance. Right, right. Take your time. Yeah. And and I, I just want to, uh, again, greet you and greet everyone uh, out there in the chat room and everybody out there in the cyber world. But I wanted to make this point because it took me back to something. My first semester at Clark Atlanta. Now, when I was at Morgan, you, didn't, you know, we didn't have to do, all I had to do was stay eligible to play basketball, okay? <laughs> so I really didn't do much in terms of, you know, I learned things. But she reminds me so much of the lady that was, uh, she was a visiting professor at Clark Atlanta. And mm -hmm. she was from, well, I know she was living in Barbados at the time.
but she was from the motherland. I don't remember exactly where, but she she uh, taught us social statistics. Right. And uh, one day after class, after lect the lectures were long, like, you know, three, four hours long. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And so uh, <clears throat> she she asked me to stay one day after our first uh, midterm. And uh, I stayed with her and I talked with her. She said, who helped you write this paper? I said, what do you mean? She said, who helped you write this paper? I said, nobody did. <laughs> she said, sit down. She said, uh, you have a purpose in life. And she said, but you're gonna go up against so many things and you're gonna be cast out by your own people first. She said, so then, this is why I, I teach, because of young men like you and young women. She said, what you wrote on this paper, she said, this is something that I want to expand on. And, and she did in one of her lectures, she used my paper. But it, it, was, it reminded me of what so, something Dr. A said, that we have to embody our purpose as individuals and it may not always be something that's glamorous right or it may not always be something that glitters and see this is this is how they take us away from our purpose and uh i just i just enjoyed her man i i, I felt vindicated <laughs> in, a, in a funny way i was right. like this is what i told i tell people all the time our scholars and our our women that are out there like her, they have hidden and are hitting, hiding, and they they will put these other women out in front, and they'll hide people like her. But I'm so thankful that her message has gotten out through your program, brother. It's an honor for me. And um, yeah. do, me, do me a favor, brother. Just yeah. tilt your your, <clears throat> your your phone. Pull the bottom out a little bit. How's that? Much better. It's just much better. Next, we can see how it is. Perfect. 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 Yeah, much perfect. Okay. Yeah. And you, you were saying what, Lance? So I'm saying that I'm um, sorry to be smacking. I had the mute button on. I was throwing that little food. <laughs> no, but um, the thing is, I spoke to a sister today. Uh huh. And I was out and about, and she called me. If you listen, if you're listening right now, sister, I just want to say. You fired me up from the ground. I have people that call me, that live all over the world, yeah. that tell me what you're going through. And she complimented me on my spiritual maturity mm. that she said to me. I'm still a clown. I still tell jokes. I still <laughs> tell old war stories. You're a 360 <laughs> degree being, though. <laughs> <laughs> but that acknowledgement meant a lot to me. And yeah. she was breaking things down how it was in her part of the world in America. Yeah. And this is no joke. These days, it's no joke. Right now, for me, it's gotten even more serious as far as my outlook and how I see things and what I must do. And mm -hmm. I just say with the Black people and the bickering and, and the weirdo energy online with these weirdos who peep I and know, right? yeah. gossip and want to know this and make new profiles and whatnot, I'm not with that. Yeah. I'm about putting out work. If I can't yeah. do that, somebody on like yourself and Dr. Day and different ones that come on, then it's all about you know talking about these things. Yeah. They're definitely going after my channel for sure. And I don't oh, care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm all over the place. So oh, yeah. for me it's war. And we're gonna keep Absolutely. on doing shows like this no matter what, because we are being erased. Yeah. We're being erased. Absolutely. Like your professor, a doctor, a day, they don't want that out there. They don't want no, the good stuff. If, 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 I, if I had a wig and lipstick on and a mini skirt, I'd have a million or two million followers <laughs> right now. You know, <laughs> I guarantee kind of, you would. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Black masculinity is not accepted. No, it's yeah. everything. everything else is pushed. Yeah. And the young folks that are out there, and even some of the older folks, who I can call them a fool sometimes because they should know better. Then he needs a, you know, 
we're on the way out if we don't unify. And that yeah. means that most people are on their way out because they, they refuse that. And like you yeah. said, the, the glittery stuff, the shiny stuff, being yeah. on stage in front of everybody, they want fame. They yeah. rebuke so-called fame from the enemy because that's what's killing us. We're fighting yeah. over each other that and the trinkets and the baubles and the rubies that they have. That means nothing yeah. for us. They're yeah. bringing in all of these migrants that don't look like us into mm -hmm. America and they're granting them jobs, union jobs. They're giving them phones. They get them licenses, things that we have to work hard for. Taxpayer money in America, black taxpayer money in America yeah. is going to them. You know what I mean? That exactly. They I saw that um, right. they had a, a thing going on in Chicago. I saw the other day, but New York is done, man. That, it, yeah. They're know. flying out. They're getting rid of Haitians, but they're welcoming yeah. in U U Ukrainians and, and Russians yeah. and all other people because they want to whitewash. This is what they do yeah, they in do. countries all over the world on record. When it gets to be where the African population gets to be t too much of a, a proportionate force, they start to bring in and whitewash these places yeah. because they know they're on their way out. Yeah, so they that's want part of the playbook for sure. Exactly. While they do us a certain way, I'm not crying victim. I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm going to take my action. I'm, I'm, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to speak it like I know it. But right. so many people, they, they, they enter the things in the wrong way. Nothing wrong with social media if you use it as a sword for truth. I but if you see it, uh, how many butts can you look at on TikTok? Man, how, how much with, with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West and we getting on? Right. Some dude told me the other day on the comment section, man, Kanye West doing the work of the people, man. He's doing <laughs> the work. What? A puppet like that? Just because what he people? has. What people right. are he referring exactly. to? Exactly. Malcolm X said that about the celebrities being looked, viewed as leaders. How are you going to do that when you. Yeah. A puppet for somebody else's agenda. You know what I mean? So exactly. it, 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 it's disgusting. It, look, I'm a, I'm gonna shut up and let you talk, but no, I'm gonna man, say this one thing. It ain't the white man no more. No, it's not. It's, it's us. Not. It's, it's it us. Is. And I, you know what? For, for 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 those of us who are fools, sink and drown. Because how yeah. many times, how many decades can you say, wake up? How many leaders of ours all over the world have to be killed for you to wake up and see? And for these people who talk about, I ran to Africa because I'm running from what? You Negroes are not fighting nothing. You punching on the on, on, on the other man's job. You understand? Now, I know we need money and whatnot, but you tell me I ran? No. I'm repositioning myself to live a good life like I deserve. Okay. I like that who, word. I like that word, reposition. That's a That's right. word, bro. When you're in a boxing match, you ain't going to stand in front of the opponent all the time. You're going to no, reposition you're yourself. Openings. But they are scared because their master got them scared. I'm not saying everybody has to leave. What I'm saying is that for somebody to say that, we can't expand. You look at the Jewish people. They're all over the world. Exactly. In every country. You got them here in Ghana with businesses that they they're pay everywhere. other people. To in. But we can't expand. We have to sit right there and do it that way. No. So... For the, I'll say 85%, because they usually say 85% of the masses are deaf, dumb, and blind. Well, for us, that's true. Even those who are educated that don't understand how to connect the education, when they don't understand, it becomes right. Exactly. You know, it's propaganda pushed, and they run with it. It's oh, just yeah. crazy. And in and, 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 and this part of my life, I'm not busting my behind like I used to. I will bust okay. my behind for those who know and focus in on but to go out there, please, wait, man, please, you got to see. And they pay, man, get out of here, fool. Man, I'm going to the club, man. I'm trying to well, get my know, next dose of HIV. The uh, They're they behind the strings pulling the, like puppets, and we're out there breaking our necks. Exactly. You know, they're white gloving. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Straight weirdo. We do the work. I just want to say a great hello to Janelle Smith, who's in the Facebook chat room. So I put it up on um in front of us so everybody else on YouTube can see. But Janelle, it's been a, a long time. I'm glad to see you here. We're keeping the fire going. And um, if you want, just come on, on to the to the YouTube side on Lance Curve so everybody else can talk to you. But um, yeah, it's it's just it's just sickening right now. I am not gonna be I'm not gonna be 70 years old talking the same stuff. I'm not <laughs> uh, no. or talking about the same people. 
No, no, right, 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 right. I'll yeah. talk it with the inner circle who are aware because we'll be on a higher level then. Yeah. But they're trying to convince these people off the street and, and they look at you funny have. and funny. Oh, you're not this and you're not that. We're the original people of the planet. We can go anywhere we want. How am I going to exactly. own a house that all do is go in the living room? I can go anywhere I want. See, that, that's the important point which you just made because why do you have to wait for somebody else to tell you to do something? I can go wherever I want. Whenever I want and however I want. Mm -hmm. Why do mm -hmm. you always have to have an explanation? Like, so <laughs> they have made our people live according to narrative so much is sickening. Oh, man. Tell me about it. It's really sickening, brother. And when you go outside of the mold that they have had us in, right? Uh, they. But <clears throat> it gets to a point where, like you said, you can't keep blaming people when you are supposed to be the original leader of the planet. That's the other thing that comes with it, this responsibility. <laughs> so right. because you don't want to think and you want somebody else to think for you. Now, while it's true, yes, the system ran by these people does exist, but it only hurts us because we still allow that system to determine how we live our lives and more importantly how we teach our next generations <clears throat> it's no more excuses now brother exactly <coughs> and, and, and there comes a time and a time for all of that wake up these uh, i'm gonna say it just like this in the world the other races. And some people say, well, you shouldn't preoccupy yourself with the other races. Well, they're going to be your bosses and your leaders later on, telling you what to do, getting shipped into the country, and they're going to be living bigger than you and looking at you. They're going to call you the N-word after a while. And, and why haven't you done better than you are now? And 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 we, we, we sell each other out for stupid stuff because yeah. I must say officially too many I'm not saying a percentage, although I know it's more than 50%. Yeah. Too many black people in 2023 are just damn stupid. Yes. Stupid. I agree, brother. I agree 100%. I'm not going to be nice to you. I've seen too much bickering, too much uh, disloyalty and backstabbing, and everybody want to be on center stage and all that foolishness. And then when somebody comes on and, and gets a compliment or whatever, whatever a good word, I, all I do is give compliments, man. All I do, I'll come on a rant myself when nobody else is on. But when you come on, man, I let people come on and I let them talk. Most of the time, they're like, Lance, are you still there? Yes, I am. I'm right here. Yeah. But I'm letting the person, you want to talk two, three, four, five. We did a 10 hour show the other day. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? We get that down over great. here. That was a good Yeah, because, because we don't know. Like I said, I always remember, I'm going to shut up after this. When I was in communication with Dick Gregory's wife, because she was one who set up all the shows and stuff like that. Oh, it was yeah, tentative. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. another couple of weeks, he was going to come on and be on the show with me, and he passed away. So that gave me a sense of urgency, man. Yeah. Like, wait a second. Even when I'm a little tired, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But and then you draw these people around when they get around with their weirdo energy. Oh, they ain't yeah, doing, nothing. They ain't sharing nothing. Look, they ain't look, doing. Man, nothing. Let's, let's be clear about something, brother. What you're doing, and what Mrs. Scarab is doing is so great. See, our, our people, because of the narratives we listen to, we have greatness amongst us. Yes, we do. And when you, when you think about all of our people who have died, um, and, and I like what Miles Monroe said. I, I told you this. We talked about it before. I think he's somebody yeah, that influenced mean, your life, too. Brilliant really your brother mm -hmm. uh, said that the majority of uh, our greatness is in the ground, in the cemeteries. Because our people, we take what has been given to us to the grave with us. And, and yeah. <clears throat> whenever, whenever I see you, because our children spend on an average 11 hours. This is crazy from what we used to do. Mm -hmm. I remember when we used to spend five hours a day. They have doubled that, 11 point something hours a day on social media and TV, okay? So who are who are the influencers? And it's important that you are a, a positive influencer 
because you, like you were saying, you have all this garbage, all this negative energy that's being uploaded. We have to fight back. We're at war. And, and this is something that motivates me as well. So you, <clears throat> what you're doing is so necessary and underrated because in our society, we're taught to look away from our strengths and to applaud our weaknesses and be led by that. Yeah, brother. So we're, we're grateful, man, for what you do in this platform because they ain't know where I, I know. But I've been out here a long time. Remember when we did our first show like <laughs> three and a half years ago? I told you this sister here, um, I went into her studio and uh, we were supposed to record something. And uh, we started talking for about an hour mm -hmm. and because uh, somebody referred me to her. And she looked me straight in the eye. She said, I can't go on the air with this. You remember when I told you that? Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Because I, I, I was surprised that you allowed me to, to go on um, air. <laughs> I, oh, no. re you, remember, I told you, I was like, man, this brother ain't going to. And then I started listening to some of your programs. And I was like, oh, this might be the vehicle right here that I can get this <laughs> truth out of. Exactly. It, it has turned out to be more than that, brother. I, I was able to build the academy because Beautiful. of your strength. And so, you know, the things that you do, there are those of us that really appreciate you, brother. And now, you know, I know yeah. how our people are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is no pat on the back. This is something that's well deserved, brother. You should, you are in the Hall of Fame in the soul you, of brother. black folks, bro. Trust and believe and, you for two and, decades. And I thank you too for that. Um, because it's like when you're, I'm not racing any one person or any people or any other channel. I'm not racing. I'm racing against myself, right? Yeah. It's my own little personal thing. Like, okay, I can do better. I can do more. I wake yeah. up. What, what am I going to talk about today? I'm fighting sleep. My head hitting the microphone. Middle of the night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The supermarket. Okay. I see something, I hear something. I whip out and record a cab driver while I'm driving on the Uber. You know what I mean? Everywhere oh, I go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's like being in, in NASCAR and you're one of the drivers. I know there's a crowd around us watching the race, but I'm racing to try to beat my personal best. Right? Yeah. So it's a, and it is a race where you try to hit the finish line first, but for me, it's to get better on my time. Yeah. Because there was That's something our most that, precious you know, thing. Time is our most precious gift. And I see yeah. how over the years that there are people who have come on the show and they're not around no more. You know what yeah. I mean? Like 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 Brother Holla, rest in power, oh, passed yeah. away last September 2022. He was planning on coming out to Ghana. You know what I mean? And he inspired me so much in our personal conversations. I, then remember, I, had, that, I remember that, brother. Yeah, Brother Sean, who, who drove the bus with me it was instrumental. The guy is brilliant. I say is because that's his energy, not not was. But the yeah. guy is brilliant. He was probably like about 15 years younger than me, but he was one of those back-end dudes that helped me to see certain things. He didn't miss a beat. He was like, Scurve, you know, why, why don't you try it this way? Why don't you try it that way? He even gave me a book on branding and different things. Wow, we would sit wow. in, in, in the parking lot at, at the bus company after we finished our shift. Sometimes we get out at one o'clock and we're standing there until the sun came out if we had the next days off. Wow. So, so those are things that have fed into me. I always give yeah. props to my parents, always, but I'm just saying they're brothers and sisters along the way, so many and too many to, to, to count that I know that, I, I, again, I'm not looking for any, I don't care about being the most popular. I don't care about, you know, we fancy up the graphics and put the face out there because that's the brand. I like the joy of the process. I like to be here and, and be the plate that people can come on and speak their mind. I'm always saying, come on, come on. If you want to come on, come on. Say what you got to say. Like the yeah. young lady that called me today, I said, are you ready? She said, yeah, I got to get my bulleted points together. Sister Danina's going to be coming back. She's 90% done. She called me today. Oh, great. You know what I mean? I like all that stuff. I mean, sometimes there's a hit or miss. There have been people who have come on that were frauds. Yeah, you know, who have done yeah. criminal acts and different things, and I didn't know, so that's why I have to vet things more. But that's not going to stop me. Yeah, I love doing this, and and there's other. Th I mean, I draw. I'm an artist. I got to get more into my art, but I love doing this the same way. Absolutely. But it hurts me. That's it hurts me when I see the stupidity. 
Yeah. It's, it's no, it's no, it's no excuse anymore. And on the platform, as I'm talking on the individual shows that I do little monologues and stuff, I'm going to be rougher. I'm going to be rougher verbally. I don't hate black people. I love them, but that's why I'm, I'm coming at them harder. You know what I mean? Because so many are, are, are being, they're so stupid. There's a reason why the word is in there. It, come on now. We're going to wait a hundred years. So they're killing us off the poisons, diseases, bad foods, bad, weird lifestyles and all kinds of things. You know, there's life in a woman's vagina. There's no life in a man's anus. Come on. A man, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Come on, man. There's only two <laughs> things out there. What is it? Choppy, choppy business and hormone titties and whatnot. Come on. I'm sick of it. I'm just yeah. it's so stupid. It so is. Stupid. It, it really you know? is, brother. Yeah, they'll be, they'll, they'll not. They'll, well, listen, I, I'm recording this on another platform, so they knock it off. I still have it. I don't want to mess up your presentation, my brother. Oh, oh, I, man. Will, I will be ranting. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I in fact, ranting. I got I, I got a name for it for it now for you, Skirversity. <laughs> Skirversity. <laughs> Skirversity. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, so the, uh, Come on in, brother. Okay, if you're finished, if you could uh, put up that uh, put up that uh, picture for me again. Yeah, yeah. I want to start out by greeting everyone, and uh, today we're going to be covering uh, a very important subject: uh, symbols, images, and concepts embracing Black consciousness. Now, the reason why I have this picture up, this comes from uh, the Book of Stones. Uh, in Kemet is 10,000 years old. And here is the goddess Shishak giving a fruit to the pharaoh or the king, a divine fruit to let him know that, that the creator and the creative spirit still believe in you regardless of whether you made a mistake or what have you, but you are the leader. And so we're giving you this fruit, the divine fruit saying that you need to, um, you know, stand up, continue to do the things that you're doing and lead our nation. Now, the reason why I'm showing this, okay, brother, you can take it down. Thank you. The reason why I'm showing this and we're talking about concepts today <clears throat> is because this is where the 2,000-year-old uh, concept about Adam and Eve was plagiarized from, okay? A lot of people, you know, our people don't like to look at our true history because we've been so inundated with narratives, okay, that it's hard for us to, when we look at truth, when we look at the Book of Stones, we know that this is 10,000 years old and this is 2,000 years old. Now, anyone, you, you don't even have to, you just have basic common sense to know that something that's 10,000 years old, there's more of a chance of that concept being copied from than the same concept that's 2,000 years old. That's just plain common sense. Okay, so this is where this um, story came out of. Um, and today, the reason, the reason why we need to talk about this is because symbols today and in the past has always been one of the greatest influencers of civilizations in history, particularly because we were the ones that originated all, most, if not all of the concepts we even live by today. Um, and we're gonna go through a few of them um, and talk about them. And I also have a treat for you, uh, for the family. I, uh, for some reason, I, I never knew, I never thought about the fact that I didn't present the Academy's curriculum 
and a workbook for our children. Because I know many of us have children. Uh, we have a lot of uh, our young women raising kids as well. And so um, Master Glam is one I can think of right now. But it's, it's important that we begin this process now and uh, get this information out. So I want to apologize to the family that I didn't uh, get this information out to you earlier. But um, that'll be included in our presentation today. Um, but symbols have always been one of uh, the most influencers on the planet. Okay, they were originally used to communicate, um, also to indicate wealth, protection, fertility, agriculture, birth, death, spirituality, royalty, rulership, worship religion, education, and even destruction. So you see, as far back as you can look in antiquity, symbols were very, very important to our people. Okay, um, the, thing about, the thing about our people is we have always been master myth creators, okay? And <clears throat> these myths, were associated with our experiences in nature. And so we develop concepts from that, okay? And, and so uh, we actually produced, um, that's from our spirit mind, all of the concepts that you see in the world today. It, it was funny, I um, saw this lady one time um, she was from another culture, a European culture. And uh, she was saying that the ancient Egyptians were illiterate. And this is why they had to um, create the Medu Nature because, uh, you know, we didn't. Well, this immediately told me that this is a person that has no understanding of spiritual things because. <laughs> The highest form of knowledge is in signs and in elements in the universe and here on the planet. So I knew that this individual was disconnected from real source energy. But the point is that these are the people that we have. I think she was on the History Channel. I'm not sure which one or Nova. But these are the people that are teaching our children and influencing them um, in these ways and disconnecting them from our true concepts, which are rooted in spirituality. Um, and this is the difference between narratives and concepts, because you can't have a narrative, okay, without a concept. And our people produced all the concepts, but we have been um, taken over by those who have plagiarized our uh, ancient concepts and given you narratives that you now live by. Okay, so we know that symbols are passed down from generation to generation for thousands of years, right? Um, and uh, ancient symbols uh, that are still prevalent in our society today is a good example. We're going to go through um, about six or seven of, of these ancient symbols um, so that we can see how they were passed down. Um, so, but bef before, I, before I get into that, um, we're also going to look at, uh, we're also going to look at the modern day symbols that influence uh, our society today. We're going to look at the cross. We're going to um, look at social status, such as uh, cars, houses, you know, titles, things of that matter. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the obelisk, which is really the tekanu, but we're going to talk about how it's perceived in its modern day uh, interpretation. We're going to look at the pyramid, okay, the rainbow, 
uh, the Confederate flag and Confederate general statues. We're gonna look at the Statue of Liberty. We're gonna look at churches. Uh, we're gonna look at um, institutions of learning. And then we're also gonna look at uh, the symbol uh, associated with nat Native American headdress. Um, <laughs> because uh, these, these symbols, or the symbols uh, portraying the Native American headdress uh, go directly back to um, black tribes here in America. So we're also gonna look at images, uh, the psychosocial impact um, that create archetypes in our subconscious mind. Now archetype, is a um, subconscious standard that we look at whenever we make decisions, okay? So, and I said on one of the shows before that 99% of our archetypes are white people that we have been told about in different parts of history. And so whenever we, this is why it's so difficult for us to accept the things that we bring to each other because we immediately weigh it against that, that standard. When, when that's reversed, that's the other way around. Okay, but we're, we're gonna look at uh, the images today that influence us. Uh, Jesus Christ, the picture. Um, of Jesus Christ, the blonde hair, blue eyed picture that is dominant in all of the um, cultures of black people around the world. Uh, we're gonna look at standards of beauty. We're gonna look at media images, the propaganda associated with that. We're gonna look at uh, the news stories, the narratives that they put out. We're gonna look at the concept of angels. Um, many people, well, they don't, they don't get the credit for that because, again, this is not talked about in the institutions of learning that teach our children. That the first women on the planet shown with wings was Aset and Mayat. And this is very important because these are the, the things that um, we think when, when we were growing up, in Christianity and looking at the um, white babies with wings, we are heavily influenced by that image. Um, also, the images uh, of the innovators of science, math, and history, our people have been taken out of um, their respectful place in history in terms of uh, what they uh, contributed to these important uh, uh, parts of history as well as science and math. Uh, socially destructive people. Uh, we are painted, we know that all cultures have a um, terrible 10%, but again, ours is flipped upside down. Uh, I don't care what nobody say, 90% of our young men and women, they want to, you know, make some kind of impact on the world in a positive way. Um, we know that we have knuckleheads like everybody else out there destroying the culture. We know that. Um, and then we talked about the goddess Shashat earlier um, and where this concept was taken out of. So see, we have the proof. The problem is, is they don't want us telling the truth to our people. So um, I'm gonna do an introduction and then Lance, I'm gonna go through the workbook real quick. Take uh, your time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just talk about the introduction first of the presentation. And then we're gonna go to the graphics for the children and how you can begin to use this tool again. I don't, I'm not trying to monetize anything. It's more important for our people to get this information 
you know, it doesn't matter to me anymore whether or not. It's because we have to stop thinking about fiat first. Okay, this is something that, again, that holds our people back. Yeah, you should be compensated for, you know, when you put in work, yes. But at the same time, um, sometimes you have to put in work and be compensated later by, by the universe. And so I really, I'm really going to get that out there for you today. But I want to talk about the introduction of our presentation today before I do that. Okay, so again, we're showing the difference between a concept, okay, and I'm going to give you the definition of a concept is something conceived in the mind. Key word being conceived or key words being conceived and mind. Uh, it's the uh, thought, okay, that's uh, organized around a main idea or theme, okay? It's a thought or notion. So our ancestors, by them studying the heavens and the earth, okay, they knew about now, a perfect example of that is uh, the names that were given when we covered the different uh, symbols. Uh, one of the, the symbols, a couple of symbols, uh, was uh, Newt, the, the goddess of the sky, the, the feminine energy. And then there was Geb, the earth, the masculine energy. So our people were aware of this, and also there was Lev, the heart, which was weighed against the feather of Mayat. And this is the origin of what we know as law today. Um, they were, they uh, actually copied. In fact, to even the, um, the way that they set up, if you look at the earthen mounds in Louisiana, they copied that, the way, the big, um, the big bird that um, they use as a, um, a way to set up the structure of uh, the Congress and uh, mainly the Congress and the Senate. That came directly from our people here on Turtle Island in Louisiana. They, they created this big uh, bird looking um, uh, structure. And you know they would have conferences there and talk about issues or what have you. <clears throat> so we know that that uh, a concept is something that's conceived in your mind. When you think, okay, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but you are taught not to think. You are taught to accept narratives. Now, here's what a narrative is. A narrative is a spoken or written account of uh, connected events. So, so again, someone can look at your concept. We know this um, because it's even been done in the linguistic translations uh, of the original, the Medu Nature. And even it goes back to uh, in um, ancient uh, East Africa, in, in Somalia, they had a religion that's uh, 40,000 years old called Ebe Wak, where Wak was the supreme being. So our, our P and, and he had the um, attributes of divine retribution was one, and uh, also uh, righteousness, which is tied in with uh, the Mayotan laws. But see, these are concepts that our people always live by. No one had to give you a religion to have these um, characteristics. You already had these built into our culture. But the, the, the key thing is that a narrative is a spoken or written account. In other words, I got a pen. I'm looking at what actually happened, and then I'm, I'm writing a narrative based on that. Okay, this is, this is what has been done to our people. This is the way we've been indoctrinated. Whereas concepts you created, Okay, from looking at the sky, from looking at Orion's belt. Okay, from look, you know what I'm saying? From looking at things in nature, you knew that the not that there was a relationship, okay, with the egg star and uh, 
with uh, the Nile River because every time it appeared, okay, in the cosmos, then there was a relationship. Then they knew that the banks of the Nile was gonna overflow. Our people lived by the solar clock. So all of these things, hey, we have been disconnected from nature with. And so this is, this is why we're so confused as a people and because we continue to deny our natural selves. So uh, throughout our history, we have always been subjugated by narratives written about us, not by us. Uh, this is why even when they write movies or whatever they produce, very seldom are those writers going to be look like you and I. They're going to look like people who have always written narratives about us, okay? Um, these narratives are simply plagiarized, regurgitated, and repackaged and presented as true. Every single concept that was conceived by African mind has been taken, okay, and uh, basically taken by European nations, okay, and claimed by European nations. From religion to law, education, medicine, mathematics, science, astronomy, and geometry, these original concepts stolen from our people. As I was saying earlier, we can even trace the linguistic footprints of our original concepts through Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and English. Okay, we, we can trace the footprints of the Medunetra um, and the basic uh, Mayotan concepts through what they have developed through narratives. A major part of these narratives have to do with the interpretive meaning given to our ancient symbols and the images created from them. So when they got these symbols, when they first came across these symbols, then they do what they always do. They change, they change the name first, which we'll see. And then they change the actual spiritual meaning attached to that because our people gave spiritual meanings to all things in nature, whether it was um, organic or inorganic. Our people gave names to them. Okay, um, the images created from these cultures have completely erased the original concepts and their meanings by our people. Um, as we trace the concepts and discuss them today, we can clearly see the enormous effort put forth to disconnect black people from their genetic memory bank. The most important fact about these original concepts is the purpose for which they were presented. All of our original concepts were based on divine laws and one law in particular, which because of this law, the weapon they have created is division, major division, because the divine law of oneness uh, was the concept of interconnectedness of all things in nature. And this is one of our fundamental principles. This is why they always separate, se separate segregate, and divide. Okay, but this, this concept of interconnectedness goes throughout our original culture. Um, the images that are worshipped in our society are all segregated from this concept. So as you can see, there was a lot of time spent um, basically on writing narratives that would confuse our people and, and put them in a bind, um, you know. In fact, that's what the Roman word of religion means to bind. So um, what I wanna do right now, Brother Lance, um, is I wanna I wanna go over the workbook that um, people can use for the children. If you could put the workbook up there, the, the first yeah. page. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the first row. Okay, we'll do it like this. Let me do a share screen. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. And, okay. Okay. 
So and you know the order that I sent when I sent them all together. If you went in that order, that would, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. You got it, brother. Okay. Uh, is there any way to make it bigger? Like I don't yeah, have to be on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. And let me take this other thing off here. Hold okay. on. Okay. I I don't even have to be on the screen actually for this portion until we come back to the um, presentation. Well, it's good to see you on, brother. You're oh, the one okay. presenting it. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? I'll yeah. put you. So, so what I was going to do, I was going to read it directly from your feed. I was going to okay. explain it. All right, let, me, let me go back now. What did I do? Uh, okay, here we go. My... Yeah. If you, could, if you could blow it up, it would be perfect. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. All right. Go. Different configurations here. Okay. That's as big. Let me go to the original screen. Let me see if I can do something with that. Okay. Okay. Usually have where you can make it a little bigger. Let me see. Mm, no, I'm sorry about that, brother. No, that's as big as it can get. Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's yeah. fine. I, I can roll with that. Um okay. just let me know when I need to go to the next one. Okay. So um, what I wanted to share with everyone is that um, I produced from the Academy's curriculum a workbook for our children that basically teaches that nature is our greatest teacher and that if they're going to, you know, spend as much time as they do on these devices, then they should be looking at things that um, teach them about our culture, their real creator, and, you know, to open the genius within. Because it's so important how we teach our children, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, because there, there are basically four learning styles that they have developed. So the children that um, I targeted were between the ages of three and 12. But there are four learning styles that they have identified that they use in um, public school, right? It's visual, auditory, um, read and write, and kinesthetic. Now, it's been proven that black kids are kinesthetic learners. You know, I, I personally know this. And, you know, we know this because black kids don't have to really be given any directions or instructions. They can look at it, they can figure it out, and then, and then they can put it. Now that's real learning, that's student-centered learning. That's the genius our kids have in them. But they are told if they can't use proper grammar, um, if they can't identify the different syntaxes and all of these different things that they put before our children, who actually spend no time dealing with stuff like that, but their standards um, of intelligence are, are based on that. And I, I think, I know I put out um, these three black kids that they identified with the highest IQs ever recorded on earth. I put it out on Facebook and Instagram, a friend of mine sent me. Um, but our kids have the ability, but see, they're told when they, when they do it that way, they're told that that's wrong. Okay. So I knew, you know, I said, you know, I have to develop something that um, really wars against this. Okay. And this workbook is perfect. Now what the kids need, oh, there's something else I want to explain too. Um, before I get started here, is that um, the object of teaching and the object of learning is for our children to um, bring forth their genius from within, okay? It's not to, to be able to regurgitate all of the lies that are being told so you can get a good grade. No, that's not the purpose because the gift that you have, and we know this from our ancestors and all the inventions that they produce and never got credit for, that you have the ability to produce things. 
um, a good movie to show them um, really before you let them get into the workbook. But a good movie to show them uh, most death starred in is called um, Something the Lord Made. Um, the story of Vivian Thomas, the black man who was responsible for creating the tool um, that um, solved the blue pit, blue face uh, disease, you know, that white kids would, would have. Uh, up until that time, they, uh, they, they didn't have a cure for it. But, um, you know, the number one uh, medical school, John Hopkins here in America, he was the one. Now, um, this doctor, and I don't want to tell the movie, but I just wanted to kind of shed some light on this. But this doctor, even to this day, gets credit as being the one who was um, the one who, who came up with this tool and the surgery. But they actually, um, decades later, gave Vivian Thomas um, the recognition he deserved. And here's a man that never went to um, medical school or what have you. And many of our kids have these abilities, OK? So um, the last thing before we actually get into it is um, it was based on Dr. Um, Jawanza Kunfufu. Um, I hope I said his name right, Kunjufu, uh, on his study, okay, and the study of others that was based on the fourth grade syndrome in which up until the fourth grade, black boys were testing in the 90 percentile okay but something very interesting happened they tra tracked them from the third grade all the way to the seventh grade but something interesting started happening in the fourth grade the black boys began to you know their grades begin to slip slip this is when more emphasis was put on their athleticism. Uh, more emphasis was put on, you know, which one could get you know, And these are natural things, the prettiest girl. Um, but the big thing that was introduced to them is they became aware of um, racism and prejudice. They began to look into the books and they didn't see their faces or they didn't see anybody that looked like them in the books. All the stories about heroes and sheroes that were told were told about Europeans. So whether we can see it, you know, plainly or not, we were, we were and our children are affected by these things. When they go into the physical buildings, they don't see any pictures of themselves on the wall because the narratives have been completely changed. So they don't see anything that associates. And I remember um, and Dr. John Henry Clark's uh, great work, A Great and Mighty Walk. He said that uh, he didn't even know that they were poor because within our culture, we celebrated everything that we did and that, um, you know, we would be placed in a situation where once we did get to the point where we got to that all of the essence of the things that we believed in were stripped away when, when you they started going to public schools and being when they could, when they were given the right to read and write. So all of these things um, play a part and our children's learning. So this is why um, it took a couple of years to develop the curriculum, but um, I'm satisfied with it. Um, one of the things that um, I do wanna say is when you sit down with the kids, um, provide a, um, a tablet or something they can write on, a uh, number two paper, uh, pencil with paper and uh, uh, with an eraser and just basically show them the workbook and ask them to interpret the symbols that they see and what it means to them. Not what you, it means to you. Don't you define it for them. 
Okay, so I took more time on this, but I'm gonna go through the other ones pretty quickly. But the most important thing is that they are putting down their uh, concepts, okay? I mean, their comprehension of what they're seeing and not what you're telling them it is. Because remember, this is what the problem is, is that they're learning based on other people's narratives. Okay, you'll be fascinated by what some of these kids or children will write and say about things that they see in nature. Okay, uh, Lance, and, and it doesn't have to be in any particular order. You can just put, um, well, actually, the um, yeah, okay, that's fine. So now, again, 70% of communication is nonverbal, okay? So... When the reason why we're talking about, and, and I really had to keep in mind that we're dealing with three year olds up until the older ages, but the basic elements where, where you have um, electricity, you have the sun, which provides solar energy, you have the magnetism of the moon that controls the um, oceans at night. Okay, then you have, I mean, which H2O and magnetism is also connected. Um, and then we see the sun, we break it down in the four different areas that we um, um, are influenced by, which is our heart, our head, our mind, and our spirit. Okay, and each one of those parts are 90% of our makeup, okay? Um, this, this is why what they do with our children is they, they shut them off on the 90% because this is the way that they learn. Our kids are superior learners in that they can look at, you know, a particular element and connect with that element in ways other than its physical existence. Okay, so, but we know that, that these elements uh, affect us. When we, when we look at the sun and the 90 degrees of each area, we know that each one of those parts of us, okay, are important, but they are more important all together. So uh, let the kids think about how, now this one you may have to explain to them um, okay, so in your four different areas of um, experiential knowledge, through your head, your heart, okay, through your spirit, and through your physical connection with the planet, okay, and the cosmos, how does um, each one of these particular elements affect life here on the planet? Again, you're going to be surprised that because when you look at some of these um, <laughs> these cartoon books that they have for our kids, treating them like they're, you know, just dumbing them down. OK, you can go to the next one, Lance. I didn't want to take too. I don't want to take too much time on the graphics. Um, OK, so this one is based on um, this one is based on one of the primary concepts that um, we teach here at the academy. It's the, um, and a lot of you have heard me talk about this before, but it's the caterpillar, the, um, the metamorphosis concept in nature where the caterpillar has to go through a cocoon experience to become a butterfly. But then I broke down the different aspects of a caterpillar, the different characteristics and also of the butterfly. And the two that stands out the most is that the, the caterpillar basically follows narratives, okay? Um, everything that's been, that you've been indoctrinated with in the system, you go with that. You ever dealt with people who just, you know, they're like ants just one way? But in order to have a metamorphosis, okay, one of the interesting things, um, and you can show the children this as well, is that when the caterpillar is actually going through a metamorphosis, it loses most of its body, okay? Almost like a rebirth. Well, it is a rebirth, 
But the butterfly, the characteristics that we highlighted, the uh, most important thing is that it functions at 432 hertz. Okay, and that it, it is uh, connected to, you know, the full spectrum of sight and sound. I listed a few more attributes. So this is something to kiss, um, you know, for them to know that you always have the power to move from your lower consciousness to your higher consciousness. You have that power within you by the way you behave, act, and speak. Okay, um, the next one. You can go to the next one, Brother Lance. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, do you think, brother? No rush. No yeah, rush. No Let's wait one second. Here we go. No, no rush. You good? Okay. Yeah, you can skip past that one because that's a duplicate. Okay. I just explained that one. Okay. Next one. Okay. The one. This is um, about the per your the purpose of all natural things, okay? Um, and basically the, the wave and the seed. So we, we know that everything starts out as a wave. The, the children should know this because we have this connection with the cosmos. But when it comes to the planet, it's in the form of seeds. And it's very important how those seeds are planted. Okay, and this is a concept um, that uh, they need to be familiar with because this will really have them thinking that um, when you look at uh, the cosmos and the, the three elements that are there, they affect the way that it happens to us on the planet is through the trees. Okay, and this is why they're cutting down all the trees because again, they're trying to destroy the natural way of life and the power that we have, okay? And putting up artificial trees. And here we have where we have the symbol, our great symbol of the pyramid, okay? I believe, yeah, it's kind of small, but that's the young lady sitting under the tree pointing up, right? At the pyramid. Okay, so um, we know that um, this was a concept in the minds of our people because Orion's belt is how they align the pyramids here on earth and also the concepts of um, sacred geometry, okay? The letter three and how um, in our, in our um, being, we have the sacred geometry of the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland, and the pineal gland, and they're all connected in the shape of a pyramid. And so one of the reasons why our people are so emotional is because the hypothalamus gland is connected to our emotions. Okay, Brother Lance. But that's a good one um, if they, oh boy, I can't even see. Oh, yeah, okay. So whenever you see uh, Felonius, the parrot, I had to change his name because the original one, I was getting some uh, emails calling him Paco the Parrot. <laughs> the people were feeling some kind of way. You know, it's just an illustration. But uh, whenever you see Felonius, uh, like Felonius Monk, uh, you know that it's some kind of um, teaching in nature original concept that was because everything that they have created narratives uh, was taken from nature. So the parrot is the original um, audio visual system, right? Um, the thing that's important about nature is it regurgitates or it, it speaks things that it hears whether it's true or false, okay? And this is very important. And, and this is important for our children to know that just because somebody is speaking something doesn't mean that it's true. But the big difference between the artificial um, audio visual system is it doesn't change or edit anything that it hears, okay? Whether it's true or false, it is what it is. So um, 
that's the big difference. Whereas in the audio visual world, okay, they regurgitate the things they hear. The difference is that they edit it and then they make it into narrative form. Okay, and this is the unnatural way um, that um, our children are taught that, you know, whatever narrative fits your, you know, whatever you're trying to put forward, then that's what, that is not true. And see, that is what destroys the um, moral fiber in our children that you can lie and make up and, and uh, come up with all these different narratives, all right, and just omit the fact that the truth is right in front of you. So that's, uh, uh, <clears throat> if you, Les, do you see down at the bottom, um, aside from the, the ones I sent you, uh, I have a nature's language where I have like about six images on one, card there graphic okay i had to pull back and see okay don't was... don't worry about it if you if you have to go out uh... yeah because those are too small on the bottom okay. of this to see um if i had downloaded them all all i could put them yeah. up separate but I'm, I'm showing it as it is in facebook messenger no, that's fine that's fine whatever I've... you can show yeah i thought it was show a little bit in... yeah no uh -huh. that's fine next okay you can you can go to okay. the next one Okay. The important thing, okay, so yeah, so this is, I have several ones like this. It's kind of hard for me to see. Ah, there we go. Okay, this is the divine law of oneness. This is the law that's very important to teach to our children, okay? I can't ex express how important this is um, because there is a, a corruption of divine laws which they created the tree of death because of this corruption, okay? So we know that all of the divine laws have always been under attack by this um, system, this religious system. Um, but let's look at the tree of life, okay? The two different polarities that exist, um, you know, on the planet, okay, and in the cosmos. The number one is the law of oneness, divine oneness, okay? Um, all energy is connected, and the principle is that it is a collective consciousness. Some people think of it as, uh, as uh, uh, I can't think of the term right now, the Akashic records. But that's different in the sense that these are, uh, these are principle, there are principles attached to this. The law of polarity, which we discussed, uh, where uh, there is a duality of opposites, cause and effect. And the principle associated with this is that everything has a manifestation. And we think of the caterpillar and the butterfly. Uh, the next uh, part of the uh, divine laws or the tree of life is germination and manifestation. And the three elements of life, Okay, the sun, vitamin D, uh, water, H2O, and fertile soil, uh, which is represented by seeds on the planet. Okay, um, you must have people, the principle is that you must have people giving you uh, sunshine, water, and fertile soil. Uh, the divine law of relativity or testing. The principle associated with that is nature's karma, that you're being tested and that uh, there, there is karma, natural karma associated with these tests uh, based on the decisions you make. And these are things that need to be taught to our children because they're learning, okay, from people that are not attached to this, okay. Uh, gestation, the divine law of timing. Um, there is an appointed time for all things. Um, this is a very important concept that our people knew and taught. That there is a appointed time for all things because, like I mentioned earlier, they knew when they saw the X star that uh, it was associated with the Nile River over flooding its banks. 
Okay, that's just one illustration. Uh, attraction, okay, uh, positive and negative. And the principle associated with that is that your thoughts, okay, your thoughts create your reality. And the last one, uh, vibration. Everything in the universe vibrates. The, um, the question is, or the principle associated with, is you vibrate either at a high or low vibration. Now, now, what they corrupted was the tree of death. And I think it's important to explain this to young people as well, is that the, the difference between the tree of life and the divine laws is that there's division in the world based on separation and fragmented uh, narratives. There is individualism, which is um, a lower consciousness. Okay, and these are very um, important things for our children to learn. Um, artificial seeds, negative energy. Uh, people cheat and deceive, you know, to be number one at all costs. Corruption, corruption of, of principles of delayed gratification. You know, we live, we live in a fast food generation. They've taken away um, the principle of delayed gratification, but not from all cultures because they teach their kids from, you know, a certain age. They already identify certain things that they should be doing based on their, um, their gifts. And uh, the big one, TV, social influence, media, um, basically are teaching our kids to be motivated by greed, um, you know, to, to let emotional pain rule their lives and suffering, function at a low vibratory rate, and also uh, the music frequency that they're, they're um, subject to. Okay, brother. I think, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a chart. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I'm not going to spend much time on it. But um, basically that the cosmic and natural forces of nature um, are broken down. I broke it down on a chart here to show the different aspects of what they do. And, and uh, this is important for our children to know because, again, the narratives that they're being taught, is they're being taught that inorganic things have more power than organic things or artificial things have more. Um, and, and I look at it like, okay, your, your natural IQ is greater than your intelligence IQ. You know what I mean? But again, they have reversed this because they know that our kid, kids have this power and they're kinesthetic learners. But when you go through this chart with them, you can actually use this for the, the first uh, graphic with the five different elements that influence us here on the planet. They, they can associate that with that. Okay, brother. Uh, here, here we see <clears throat> the sheep and the wolf. Now, we live in a system that um, is motivated by the wolf personality. Okay, but they also have regulated our people to a sheep mentality. And, and again, you know, we, we're not used to talking to our kids about real life because we, again, we have been taught. Well, I won't say that. There are some cultures, they do teach their kids about real life. They don't sugarcoat things that put the, ki the children at risk because they're thinking one thing because, you know, someone has a cross around their neck and quoting scriptures to them that, you know, they're trusting this person with their life, okay? And I don't need to go into statistics to show you, tell you how dangerous that is. But let's look at the sheep. The sheep is a follower. The sheep um, follows narratives that are given to, to them. They're timid, okay? They don't want to challenge the narratives because they feel like if they challenge the narratives, they're going to lose whatever advantage that, um, this wicked system has 
to give you whenever you don't bow down or go on the mountaintop and bow down to them. They're easily manipulated. They have a herd mentality. So we're all going to be this way. Um, we can't see things in the 300 and see, well, really in a 720, when you include the metaphysical abilities that we have to connect with the cosmos, when someone puts you in a box, you know, <clears throat> just like, you know, that's what I like about you, Brother Lance, you know, you let all of your different sides come out. Like, <laughs> you know, that's how they're, they're so used to putting us in a box in our kid, our children in boxes that whenever they um, see things differently, they're chastised for that. No, you don't have to go along because everybody is wearing the same color or because everybody likes this one team and you live in that city, but you like, you know, this, this type of foolishness, bro. Uh, they, they don't speak for themselves. Okay. We speak for everybody else but ourselves. What is so wrong with advocating for what black folks need or even want? And what is so wrong with that when everybody else does that? We need to teach our children this. Look, you have the right as the, not just because you're the original person on the planet, okay, but you have a right because you are created as an individual when the melanated sperm and the melanated egg exploded, then you were chosen to be who you are and you don't owe anybody no explanation if you change tonight, <laughs> okay? About how you feel about something as long as it's about something to uplift you and those that look like you. You can't get beyond that responsibility that they uh, have indoctrinated our people when this system that they have us in cannot be effective if all of them was not participating in it, okay? So stop with this craziness. Teach our children something different. And finally, the sheep behavior, they're dependent on others. Again, what if these people decide one day just off because you know they function at the caterpillar level, okay? They already, you know, are killing you and trying to destroy you in every way you can think of. So what if they send, they're shutting down the, all the major corporations in, in our neighborhoods or what we have left of them, where the majority of black people live? So we have to arm our kids with this. Quit this kumbaya crap, okay? The world that they're entering into they're going to have to fight for everything because they are planning to have um, our kids operating at the same level that we're operating on. Now, as I said, the wolf personality is dominant on, on the planet because of the 10, 8 to 10 percent of people that have this kind of system going. OK, let's not play games with this. Uh, I left out the fox. I have a separate one that, for that, but I'll explain that real quickly as well. The, so, the characteristics associated with the wolf, the, the wolf is that it's an apex predator. In other words, it's going to take advantage of every weakness it sees that you have. Okay? Stop lying to our children. Okay? They need to know that, that they have to know that they are in a warfare, okay? You don't have to make it seem like, you know, they're fighting against people, but it's important for them to comprehend and understand what they're up against, that they're up against a calculating system that believes in eating flesh. When you look at the Eucharist, okay, when they talk about literally eating the flesh and drinking the blood, Okay, I don't know how you see this, but you know, this is in literal terms to me as well. They drink blood, we know all the vampire movies. 
Okay. We know about Vlad the Impaler. So stop lying to our children. Teach them the truth. Let them look at what they're dealing with that there is aggression towards them, the police killing them in the streets, unarmed, okay? There is aggression from these Karens attacking them. They have to have coping mechanisms. So if they, you know, like I heard one little uh, girl was like, oh my God, I didn't realize that they hate us to, to this point. The reason they don't realize it is because we're trying to make them see something different. And most importantly, it's a wild beast, okay? It's wild, okay? And you know, it's like, you know, it's like a jungle sometimes. Make me wonder why I keep, keep from going under, you know what I'm saying? And these are the things they have to know. Now the fox, I just wanna add in real quickly, is what's presented to us, to us okay? But the fox has the same, uh, purpose and that per or agenda and that purpose is to do all of the things that the wolf does through passive aggression aggression but they'll laugh at you with you they'll have jokes with you at the at the counter they'll um you know they'll go to the movies with you a sporting event you know, they'll do all these things until you start embracing your black consciousness And, and when you do that, then you'll see what you're really dealing with. Okay, brother, I'm gonna zip through these other ones real quickly. I just wanted to make some points involving those. Uh, yeah, so here, again, this is self-explanatory uh, where I laid out uh, the law of polarity, how it exists in, on the planet and how our children must be aware of, of uh, the law of polarity in these two manifestations of nature. Okay, you can go ahead, brother. Okay, this is this is the tree of death I was mentioning earlier about the corruption of divine laws. And you can see the wolf right there, okay, where you know the regurgitation of false knowledge is what we live by here on this uh, physical plane. So these artificial seeds have created the tree of death. Now, when you're, I know this would be a little heavy for young kids, but kids nowadays that are eight, nine years old, they can grasp this, okay? That through the corruption of the divine laws we talked about earlier, you know, that religion, mental enslavement, poison which the snake represents with which is gossip we got to stop gossiping about each other so much and more importantly uh we have to teach them you know you keep family business like the mafia you know with family you know what i mean we do that too much and then you have deception okay and manipulations through um, these weeds that grow up with with natural seeds that you are, you are the sower. You're responsible for, you know, sowing your seeds. Okay, and there'll be there'll be a good harvest if you if you understand these principles that you know that you're dealing with people who have corrupted divine laws. And uh, finally, the three areas of the spiritual, psychological, and the physical areas you can explain to them. That um, that we're dealing with principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness, and that you know, to a large extent, we're worshiping a creature system because creatures invented that system. On the physical level, um, the false images of reality, the materialistic values, and the false perceptions of success that are presented to us. Um, it's not real. That's not, you know, you have to look at what your mission in life is. We have to get our children back to that because that's how our people came out of oppression. By them having a mission surrounding their gifts. And then on the psychological level, 
uh, there's schizophrenia, depression, self-hatred, and low self-esteem. Okay, brother. I know that the parents are going to, you know, kind of get involved with, with the kids uh, in terms of their own comprehension. But uh, as much as you can, allow them to interpret this. And, and, and even if, you know, they don't have to be correct in the sentencing of it. Long as, as they write down the uh, major concept of what they get, okay, here, here we're dealing with the divine law of relativity or divine testing. And uh, we're tested here on the planet in these four areas. Our head, okay, where you see Philonius, that uh, we have been presented with negative images, given false knowledge and self-hatred. This is, this is what, and I have a wave in front of each one of these areas to show that our children have this divine wave in all of these areas that their genius can be released if they are allowed to think on their own. Okay, here their heart, okay, or leap, okay. You see that arrow there? This is the pain and suffering that our people have felt, that arrow through our hearts, okay? They must know about this because of that snake right there that, um, you know, is, is responsible for the pain, the emotional and the regular pain and the deception that's caused. Okay, so when they're looking at, you know, the cause of this, they have to know that there are people who have a snake-like heart, okay? And, and you have to explain, because now you have people out here snatching up our children, okay? This human trafficking thing is real and we're responsible, okay? We can't blame anybody else anymore. We're responsible for this. But one of the reasons why I attached, uh, with our heart and mind, these are the two areas that they're attacking the most that uh, attach the type of weapons that are being used. That's why I have that snake personality there and that arrow through the heart. They must know, okay, that everybody doesn't think like us, that they're motivated by greed. And here you see the wolf, okay, that we just talked about. Okay, it, it, it manipulates you, it's predatory, okay, and uh, yeah, it's predatory and it's thinking. And, it, and you know, in your mind, you know, you have this light bulb and you're thinking about, you know, because you have this caterpillar mind, you're thinking about things that will expand you, but you never forget that this wolf is also uploading things to our children's minds, okay? Never forget that. And that, that light bulb right there, okay? You see those two hemispheres of the brain? Okay, you have in the middle something called the corpus callosum, okay? And that's what our people have through the pineal gland okay, that other people don't have. We're able to connect both sides of, of our thinking. Okay, they wanna give that, um, uh, you know, asset to, to another person, but, or another people, but we have that, our children, I personally witnessed that. We just have to draw that out. I'm sorry, brother. Oh. No, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the waves there that I have, represents the spirit and the butterfly there, the caterpillar and the butterfly. This is the battle that's going on with our spirit. Okay, this is spiritual warfare. You're dealing with lies versus truth. And again, you know, I had to always think about trying to keep it at a level where young children can um, comprehend this as well. But the, the pictorials 
is that you must not try to sugarcoat this, okay? This is our problem. We must tell our children, this is what you're dealing with. This is what's gonna happen in this particular area of your life. But you have to think for yourself. You have to allow your heart, your spirit heart, and your spirit mind to be free, to be a butterfly and not be subject to narratives. Okay, brother? Um, I'm not really going to go through this, but this, uh, th oh yeah, this is the divine law of manifestation, the higher consciousness. Um, it basically, it's kind of self-explanatory. Again, I list the uh, laws on the left side, the creator creatrix uh, laws and what they're attached to. Okay. Um, here we see that uh, the con that the higher consciousness, okay, is always represented by the butterfly and the tree because of the seeds that's planted. So when they like to keep our some of our people functioning as low, vibrating as low as below twenty hertz, you know, which is, <laughs> you know, how that's classified in academia. Okay. But the, the faster the vibration, the higher the vibration. Okay, we, and, and we look at, again, what we're talking about today, the concept, symbols, and images. And they're basically given to us through language, religion, and education. Okay, okay, brother. I, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So um, here's a, oh yeah, I posted this one. But here's a concept that's very important to teach our kids now. Um, a lot of them are dealing with uh, suicide because um, there is a movie I saw where this was something that happened in reality where this um, young white chick teenager was, um, you know, really encouraging this young white guy, I think he was 14 years old, to kill himself, okay? And because people, and you have these bullies, you even have this in the adult world. You know, you have these people that be trying to bully you uh, to make you subject to what they're doing. I'm like, uh, I make the choices about who I'm going to listen to and what I'm going to put forward. And I, and I don't care how much fiat you offer, that's not worth me lying to my people and selling my people out. But we must teach our children that everything in nature is a teaching tool. That a mountain, we have been taught to, that it creates fear or impossibility. That, you know, this big mountain in front of us, you know, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to overcome this big challenge? How am I going to get, you know, my projects out? How am I going to, you know, just all these questions. How am I going to finish my homework? How am I going to get anything done? This is when we see a mountain. This is what we're taught how to, how to comprehend it, right? But this mountain in nature also represents a, um, a chance because I believe that, you know, there's a saying, that um, uh, you can tell a person by ad, uh, how they deal with adversity or something like that. But I believe that, no, adversity builds character or something like that. I believe that um, the response to, to uh, adversity builds character, okay? Because, <clears throat> you know, we can't control what's being uploaded to us, it's how we respond to it that matters. But that a mountain is a tremendous, and matter of fact, this ties in with the divine law of relativity testing. And that they have taken away, as I was saying earlier from our children, the, the, the principle of delayed gratification, where you have to have everything right now you don't have to pay any dues. 
you know, this is why I don't like them, you know, somebody that haven't, you know, played one game in the NFL or in the NBA, they already comparing them to the greats. No, no. You have to earn what you get. And you're going to have to go through that mountain, around that mountain, or over it. But what's on the other side of that mountain will be something greater than that mountain. And these are the types of lessons that we have to teach our children. And, and I included uh, down at the bottom a, a, a little saying, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Um, also, valleys. Valleys, again, we see that this is the divine law of relativity or testing. It is a tremendous opportunity. This is why it's so important in sports to teach, you know, sports is a good vehicle of teaching life. Like, like you know, like with boxing, Lance, what you like, that, uh, you know, it teaches a tremendous lesson. You put that, yeah, you know, you know. Uh, I, I I used to, you know, marvel at Muhammad Ali and, and Joe. You know, it's it's uh it's amazing when someone fights almost where they're in the hospital for a week to the point of death. This is what we have to instill in our children. That this valley that you're in, because it's not really a valley; it, it's a perceived valley because you're trying to live up to the expectations of other people. Stop this with our children. Stop comparing them to other people, okay? This valley represents the greatest opportunity that they may ever have. Because what this signals is that they're, unless you're doing something that causes this, uh, this law to come at you at full force, you're not doing anything. This is how you know, this is the barometer. You know, when you when you have people that you, you know, people call haters or whatever you want to call them, but when you have that energy coming, because it's an equal and opposite force coming against that force that you're bringing forward. So you, we have to teach the children that, you know, okay, Maybe you did, I don't even like the word failure, okay? Because some of the greatest innovators in the history of the world have what you call fail 20, 30 times, in some cases, 50 times. But all that means is I had 50 opportunities to learn another way of being what you term successful. And these are the lessons that we have to teach our children. Okay, stop trying to compare them with uh, all of the stuff that they're telling them in this artificial world. That has nothing to do with them. Okay, the next one, brother. I don't want to sound like I'm preaching. <laughs> you know, people call everybody that 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 gives knowledge and facts that you know that we're preaching, but it's all good. As long as they're getting the point, that's what matters. Now right. here, you're doing a good job of it. Yeah, you know, you, brother. I, you know, if, if again, they, man, I, like I told you, Dr. A really made me feel like a little kid because I felt scolded when uh, <laughs> the creator started saying to me, see, well, the creative spirit was saying to me, see, I told you this is what you stop thinking about trying to make money you need to, to put this, I didn't give you this for that. I gave you this to, to put out for the people. And even if you don't make a dime from this, that is not the purpose for this work that I gave to you. Okay, and boy, I, if, you had, if you could have seen me when she was talking like a little kid in a fetal position, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I miss, I, I let the most, and see, this is a perfect example of how, because of these narratives we live by, you know, we lose our purpose, okay, for what we've been given. But yeah, this was something that I um, posted, that symbols and images are at the root of your perceptions of who you are. 
and those that share your cultural experiences, be careful what you worship. So here, how we used to learn, how the Griots used to teach us under a tree, when we looked up at the sky, okay, we saw these images and these concepts, okay? We saw this pyramid. That This is how we were able to duplicate it on the planet. And so this is why, like I said, they have taken our symbols, talking about some Illuminati, okay, some people that are, are just coming into concepts 1,800 years ago, but you want to take our, our five to 10,000 year old symbols and claim them? I don't think so. These are our symbols, our children. Um, this is one of the reasons why they have this ignorance on social media about people who are using this geometric. Matter of fact, um, our people um, refer to this as sacred geometry, as I was explaining with the uh, pineal gland, the hypothalamus, and the uh, pituitary gland. Okay, and these are concepts that, that we, our people produce, the African mind produced this, uh, that they have corrupted and stolen. And we need to make this plain to our children because they're growing up to believe in this nonsense that they see coming out of Hollywood, that this is some sign that belonged to some group called the Illuminati. It may, they may, they, they may have usurped it. So what? Okay, brother. Yeah, that's the sign. That's the one I was hoping. Yes, all right. So this is this is the last one, right? This is the last one, brother. It might be the next to the last one. Okay. Okay. Great. So the game I came up with. Um, one of the reasons I can't really put that out completely is. Uh, called Nature Versity One for our children because the manufacturers I'm working with said that I cannot put that uh, out while they're working on the, um, on getting it uh, patented or moving in that direction. There are some things that precedes that. Um, so, but I'm gonna share, I told them, well, I'm gonna share one thing with them. Okay, so our language, we can create today. And I remember, brother, you know, some people probably thought I was crazy two and a half, three years ago when I first mentioned to you guys I was going to create, um, you know, a language for our people and our children so that we can see exactly how in antiquity our people um, when they looked into the celestial skies and, and the terrestrial of planet that this is what they saw. So the sun represents the creator. Now, I think Jess, this was a mistype when she did the, uh, translated it from my card. But the second word should be creatrix, the moon, which the magnetism that control. Now, I know a lot of people gonna be talking about the moon as an artificial device. I don't care. It affects the waters, okay? And uh, the, a tree represents a manifestation. And then this sign, uh, these three um, signs, the circle, the triangle, and, and the square, and I have the arrows, they're supposed to be going in two different directions, but it's fine. I know she had a lot to get that right. But here's the language, okay? The creator, creatrix spirit, the sun, moon, manifests, which the tree represents, excuse me, the law of gestation or divine timing, that all things have an appointed time. That's what this, the um, signs represent. That the plant, I got a little plant there, and, and the roots, it, it represents plants and roots. Uh, things, I mean, divine timing and in planting seeds, which I have the seeds there, that should be through, not in. 
but through family, friends, associates, and strangers or people. So this is our this is nature's language. This is um, a nature's language I created that our children can now use. And uh, a part of you know again, there are certain things I can't put out about the game, but this is something that can be used with our children. D just using the graphics that I've sent you, use it as an interplay. Let them choose the graphics. Um, <clears throat> With the uh, now, I have to look to see if I included the graphics with the definitions for each individual one. I don't think I included that, but this is like a little blueprint they can use. All right, brother. Oh, <laughs> we the last one, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So, what did I do? Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. So yeah, so that is uh, uh, oh boy, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So it's that right is there. something. Yeah, that is something that uh, that our people could use to immediately start um, teaching our children, and because they have, you know, contrary to what they make our that our kids learn something when they go to these facilities, they don't. What they're being indoctrinated is against themselves, okay? But this can turn the tide uh, somewhat. And brother, I'm gonna ask for a break before I get into the presentation. I need to get some more water. You know time, brother. And do a nature yeah, break. Ahead. And uh, <laughs> I, know you, I know you got that, that philosopher ability. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'll be right back. All right, brother. Okay. It's kind of dialogue that we need to be having. You know, a lot of our children think that school is just a place you go to and when, as soon as you get there, you're trying to get out. You know, our attention spans are being attacked. As much as we try to have our children learn, their their attention span is being reduced because of their indulgence in Instagram and TikTok. What did I call it? TikToksication? They're being TikToksicated and they can't hold their mind on anything worthwhile. And they're being born very uh, uh, smart and intelligent, but they can't hold on to any type of education. And the little bit of education they get is indoctrination. They don't know how to use it in their own lives, in their own world. We, it's been this way for a very long time. We've been trained to fit into somebody else's system that benefits them. We've been trained as a part and not to know the whole. When we know the whole, we know how to fit into things that we create. But if we're just a part of somebody else's system and we don't understand how the other parts work, it's a dangerous place to be. So when we find ourselves unemployed by the other, we don't know what to do for ourselves. It's a shame. And I'm not even just talking about on a really super scholarly level. We have plumbers and electricians and, and different people who know how to do construction in the very neighborhoods that they live in that where these things are going on and other people are there employed and they're not. There should be no excuse for someone to be a plumber or electrician or some type of craftsman or a, a mason doing masonry, concrete work. When we need these things, you know, I mean, it would be better if we try to steer our children into, into those professions instead of hope, having them hope that they are um, going to be the next big rapper, the next big basketball player, the next best boxer, you know, teach them discipline and let them indulge in certain things when they're young that are pleasurable to teach them the discipline. And you take that discipline and you move it on to something else. You know, other than those things where you have to be the top, you know, not even the top 1%, the top 1% <laughs> of the top 1%. You know, things that are lasting and we can do things ourselves around our homes and save money. We don't have to always pay somebody else to come in there and charge us because we have the training. You know, what happened to trade schools? What happened to home economics to learn how to navigate and, and, and do work in the home? 
you know, a lot of us just lowball our sisters and our wives and our, our women who are at home taking care of the children and taking care of the home and even doing the budget. Housework is hard work. Yeah, it is. Why is it why is it knocked like that? I mean, to have a woman, I'm not relegating, I'm gonna just say this for the next 90 seconds. I'm not relegating our sisters just to be housewives, you know. Um, that is a very important thing to be able to do. You know, even the brothers out here who are single, they need to know how to run a home yeah. and keep it balanced. And the single fathers out here, you know, more power to you. But our homes are in a mess while our wardrobes look so nice. We look so good at the club. But when you come home after the club, you're walking into a mess. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not knocking anybody for going one night to a nightclub. But we have this party mentality and escapism. Yeah. And we haven't even done anything yet. You know what I mean? We want the pleasure, but we don't want the sacrifice. And that's quite yeah. evident. We leave our sisters pregnant with the children, and we took the pleasure but didn't commit to the sacrifice. The sacrifice is really the best part. You know, you can have a little pleasure doing what you do, but following through and looking through and looking at that woman and saying, boy, I'm staying with you. I'm sticking with you. I'm committed to you. Sometimes yeah. it might be t when I see things and I candy, but I refuse. I'm coming home to you. You're my woman. I love you. I'm giving you everything. What happened to that? When two men do it, I mean, I start. Go ahead, brother. No, man, yeah, what you're saying is true. I'm sorry I missed some of it. But, you know, again, it's on us. Like, like you're saying that now we have to move beyond. We know we, we're talking about all the narratives. We know the playbook because they don't you they use the same playbook, even with the immigrants that there. This is no accident. There is a playbook because a lot of those people, again, will work for five dollars an hour. They're not going to be out in the streets um, striking. OK, and doing things that so the playbook is that they are going to use other melanated people against us because until they started putting some of them in upstate New York, it was no problem. But once that happened, but the floodgates came open. But to think about, how, you know, every time I look at what they're doing, they're so predictable. But just to have the gall to do this to our people. And see, this is why we can no longer stand by and do nothing. This is why we can no longer continue to give them all of our money, damn it. From our churches to spending on their retail to all this stuff we're doing, brother, we have to take, if nothing else in 2023, I hear a lot of people saying, this is still going on in 2023, yes. What, do you need an AK at your head? Yes, this is still going on. And they're putting it in your face and they're not trying to make any excuses about it. This is the thing. Now we have, the ability to combat this, but we spend the majority of our energy wearing each other out, dealing with our own people. You know, it's time out for this. Whatever you want to believe, then believe that, okay? We're saying that do not pass this down to our children because they're not going to have a chance in hell thinking that they can have a kumbaya experience with people that's trying to cut their throat on every chance they get. And, and you know, I wish it wasn't this way, but I didn't make it this way. This is the way it is, okay? Brother Lance didn't make it this way. This is the way it is. So we need to stop fooling each other. Okay, I'm tired of talking to black people Yes, we need to be positive. We have to stick. First of all, you can't do nothing in terms of growth and development without being positive. But we have to be able to weigh the balance. We can be positive, but at the same time, we got to look at the negative energy. We can't just pretend that it don't exist. And like I said, 
the P, black people, I put that down now from 40 to 35. The ones at 35 and over, they don't care about you no more. You, you're no threat to them. They're after the young people and the children. They can silence you with what they can give you through fiat, and you won't challenge them at all. They know this. They'll blackball people like me and Lance and Dr. A. They'll do that, and a lot of people in the chat room. But, you know, this is, you know, there's no other way to say it. This is the price that we pay for taking the oath for our people. Okay. Now, you know, I know people have other oaths that they take. Okay. But at the end of the day, now, it's up to us to move forward with what we know and what we have and to grow where we're planted. And, and this is the other thing, okay? You, we have to grow where we are planted. So I'm gonna get right into the presentation. Um, I, I went through the introduction in terms of uh, concepts and narratives. I'll just mention it again real briefly. Uh, is that okay, brother? I'll go over the introduction real quickly again. Don't, don't do it quickly. Take your time, brother. We're loving this. This is a journey. Okay, okay. So uh, in our last presentation, we gave the definition of a symbol, uh, which is a mark, a sign, or a word that indicates and, uh, or signifies uh, what is understood as representing an idea, an object, or even a relationship between people or, or groups of people. Okay. Um, and, and in our introduction, we talked about the fact that a concept like the ones I just showed you with the uh, academy's curriculum for our children is conceived in the mind. Okay, what everything you saw was conceived in my mind, but it already existed in nature. This is the same power that we all have, but we've been forced into indoctrinated into accepting narratives. So I'll be back, brother. I'm going to get another cup of tea. I'll be right okay, back. Okay. Okay. Okay, brother. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is something conceived in our minds, which is a thought or a notion that is organized around a main idea or thing. That is what a concept is. Doesn't have to be something spoken or whatever. Um, a narrative is a spoken or written account of uh, connected events. Okay, and as we talked about, this is how our people formulate, formulated all of these concepts in antiquity, and even up to this day and age, how our people came off the plantations with nothing and built everything, couldn't even read or write. This is how they did it, through these principles. So again, the title uh, is Symbols, Images, and Concepts and Embracing Black Consciousness. Uh, and we talked about the fact that symbols are passed down from generation to generation for thousands of years. And that we interact with these symbols every day. However, we are unaware of uh, these concepts that were created by our people that these ancient signs to this day are still used in various forms and in different ways. But the concepts have been changed in order to write a narrative for those who stole our great symbols. Um, the first one, so there are seven of them that I have listed. Okay, so the first one is the wing disc sun. Now, we, we see this concept on many things. Uh, you see it on the back of your dollar, okay? Um, this was a concept that our people had, which came out of the Horus of Bedet. This is what our people called it. Well, this is the name that was given to, um, the ancient name that was given to it which it really symbolizes Heru, 
Horus is the Greek name for it, which I know many of you know. But this concept originally meant newborn son. And see, this is where this concept that was plagiarized about, new, you know, uh, newborn son. Okay, but in actuality, what our people were saying was that every day the son is born, it's a newborn son, S-U-N. That was plagiarized to S-O-N. And we see this wing disc sun in many of the European um, symbols that we see all over the world. Okay, it is one of the oldest uh, ancient symbols in the world. Um, and this symbol stood for divinity, royalty, I'm talking about <laughs> the real first royal families, uh, power, protection, and also the supreme power of Horus, who was considered the son of the creator, which is plagiarized into the son of God. But <clears throat> this power was given to the pharaohs on earth. Now, if you remember the first picture that I showed you of the goddess Shashak from the Book of Stones, uh, where she was given the um, fruit, or if they want to call it an apple, because again, you know, I, I recognize, and I'm not saying this in a derogatory sense, but our people were taught through narratives in the Bible. Let, let's just, just leave it like that, okay? We're, so when I'm talking with you, I'm talking with you with the concepts but going back and forth through the narratives in the way that we had been indoctrinated so you can see how this was done. So we won't make the same mistake with our children. Um, but uh, where was I? Okay, so the goddess Shishak was given this apple to the Pharaoh saying, you are the king, you are the Pharaoh, you are the one that the, the creatrix power is putting uh, the energy into in order for you to accomplish this. Now, this particular concept was plagiarized into Eve giving the apple to Adam. This is where that came from. When those who studied, you know, the origins of our work um, this is where they, and the goddess Shishak was also in Nubia, in the caves of Nubia. So this is something when they discovered, you know, they immediately started putting a narrative to it that would fit with the narratives that they had written before. The one thing that they do with narratives that keep our people confused, and this is why I say that in order to have a system that's effective like this that's passed down for centuries and millennia is that you have to have the people that this system is designed for all in the system and yeah there may be good white people but they are still part of this system that oppresses our people because they're, you know, they're not talking against it. They're not doing nothing to change the condition of our people. So they must be fine with it. So what serves them is this huge division that people like Trump and those um, give them. So this makes them feel better in order to go at, you know, the same thing with, uh, the Democrats, it's the same thing. They, you know, they know what you like. They use the Fox approach. But again, I'd rather deal with a wolf than a fox. Because at least with the wolf, I know I have to be on guard. Where the fox can lull you to sleep before you know it. The fox got you following it to some place where you are ambushed. 
So, <clears throat> but this wing disc, okay, and also is referred to it, it as the solar disc, okay. But again, the point being that our people didn't divide nature into narratives. There was the divine law of oneness and this interconnectedness in all things through the Neturu. Okay, so we're, next we want to deal with uh, one of my favorite, the yin and the yang symbol, why I wear it around my neck, which, uh, which is also um, an ancient symbol that's, uh, <clears throat> that's associated with uh, the law of polarity. Um, the thing, the thing we have to look at now. I'm going to look at it through the 3,500 year old history that it has with the Chinese, because what we have to remember is 3,000 years ago, the Zhang Dynasty was not what it is today. We're not talking about Euro Asians. These were Dravidians and other Africans that had established ancient China, mainly the Zane dynasty. Um, this is where the Naga concept comes out of. That's a, that's a topic for another day. But um, this, <clears throat> what I'm going to be talking about is the one that's most well known out of the Song dynasty in China. That uh, the yin and the yang represented cosmic duality. Okay or the same uh, concept and principle of the law of polarity or the law of opposites. And that, now I, I'm gonna tell you, I got a little bit in my feelings about it at first until I, I realized something, I'm gonna explain that. Because again, for men in particular, black men in particular, because our women judge us by the standards based on um, European males, then there are certain things involving masculinity that um, I wanted to deal with with the yin yang uh, symbol. But this is one of the oldest um, symbols that are recon that's recognized. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna use the Song Dynasty, 3,500 years which is the one that's mostly recognized now, um, that Yang was represented as the white portion of, of, uh, of the connection of the cosmic duality. Um, and Yin was represented as the black um, aspect of it. And each one of the I of the Yin and Yang duality is in the other one so it's intertwined like this where you see the black eye and the white one and the white eye and the black one so the reason why i got in my feelings because again because of the misogynistic white male uh dominated society we live in everything is 90 degrees straight forward so when I originally looked at it, I was like, well, well, why are you making the yin or the black one have um, the traits like, uh, okay, so the yang or the yin, I'm sorry, the black one had the uh, traits of dark, being dark, slow, soft, yielding, cold, and pass it. Now, I got my feelings for, you can see how I got my feelings about that um, based on those words, but I, I took a closer look at that because actually the black one represents the mother energy, okay? And the white one was the yang, the masculine energy, sunny, fast, uh, hard, <laughs> bold, solid, fire, sun. And so I was like, oh, so they're trying to make us look soft, but actually that's not what it is because the oldest DNA on the planet is a black woman. And we know that the first principle, when you look at nature, <clears throat> for the first six weeks 
um, the X chromosome or the female chromosome is present in all in all um, eggs, or I mean, I'm sorry, in all zygotes. But the testosterone emerges at around six to eight weeks to determine if it's going to be a boy. Now, a lot of people have problems with that, but I deal strictly with nature. Um, <clears throat> so when I started looking at it from the other perspective, I was like, okay, well, they're right in the sense that everything has to begin and end and intertwine with the mother energy, right? So um, I could see why black would be that energy. And so I kind of got out of my feelings after that. But, um, and then, you know, they're both intertwined because that's where our power comes from. Our power comes from the fact that we're interconnected, okay? Whereas those that benefit from um, being divided, they divide you, but that doesn't work in your favor. That works against you. Uh, that has been one of their most effective weapons against our people, by the way. Um, the next symbol I talked about briefly, the pyramid, and why we can't let them take this symbol because it was so important to our ancestors, especially, you know, the fact that they were the first astronomers, that they looked at, there's a spiritual aspect that's involved with the pyramids because of the language in Orion's belt that our people established uh, the pyramids on in terms of how they aligned it, okay? And how they looked at uh, sacred geometry with the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland, and uh, the uh, pineal gland. And see, this credit was given, okay, to, uh, uh, what is his name? I'll think of it in a minute. But uh, A squared plus B squared plus uh, equals C squared. Uh, this credit was given to this Greek who studied, okay, who studied under uh, a commitment, uh, spiritual teacher, okay? So, we know that uh, this was plagiarized from that, or he was given credit for that. Whereas everything um, in our culture was set up on this pyramid, on this tri uh, trilogy, okay, in terms of geometrical um, shapes. So, uh, Hippocrates, that's the one is it? No, it's not Hippocrates. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, but uh, he was associated with Thales, but uh, it wasn't Thales. I'll think of his name, but he was given credit for this. Um, and then we look at uh, the fact that this sacred geometry, okay, has everything to do with how we naturally connected to things in nature. And, and, and this is something that um, our people really cherished in terms of how we looked at the sacred symbol, okay? The next one <clears throat> is a very important one. This is uh, referred to as the key of the now. And, uh, it, it's also based on fertility, okay? It's the uh, netter unk. Now, <laughs> I heard this, the same lady that, that was talking about the fact that we, um, that the ancient Egyptians were illiterate, uh, was calling the unk ank. So that let me know right there that psychologically, she couldn't even accept the fact of how our people pronounced it, okay? But, it was an African cultural identity um, that was connected to eternal life. See, and this is where this concept of eternal life comes out of. 
Um, also, it signified the power to sustain life. Um, this is our, our greatest spiritual symbol, which if you're going to wear anything, wear that around your neck, not a cross. It symbolizes birth, truth or righteousness, and consciousness. Okay. Because everything our people did was based on, um, we're far from that now, but it was based on uh, righteousness. Okay. And let me explain. Righteousness doesn't mean somebody that's pompous or, you know, somebody that's not, that's perfect or somebody that thinks they're better than someone moralistically or ethically. That is not what righteousness, righteousness means that you're going to um, give a righteous response to something that was given to you or something that exists. And, and that <clears throat> your response to it, even if it's interpreted as a wrong response, is based on, you know, your love or your heart or your spirit mind. One of the dangers with this, how they usurp this from our people, is that because we're dealing with a wolf type personality, and you know, you have to constantly be on your guard to defend yourself, which I advocate that we should always be ready to defend ourselves, is that, you know, it's hard to advocate for righteousness when you're dealing with unrighteous acts all of the time. And so our people are caught in between that. But certainly this turn the other cheek mentality is something we should stray away from. Um, okay, the next symbol we're going to look at is the cross, okay, which uh, is 3,001 and, and uh, I'm sorry, the unk is 3,150, yeah, that's not true, years, but 2,613 years BC, but now it's, <clears throat> okay, as far as when the Greeks were able to understand it. And uh, when they uh, de deciphered uh, the Medunetcher through Demotic, which is a closer form of uh, Greek, what they call hieroglyphics. But <clears throat> the cross is based on redemption, okay? Uh, like I always say, if that's the case, then why haven't you repented? If you're telling our people that they have to repent, in order to receive the heaven that you have and enjoy and your children and descendants have enjoyed for centuries, then why is it that you haven't repented? Why is it that you haven't repented from the death, murder, rape, destruction of black culture and the things that you continuously do So how, how's, how can you look at the cross being representative of redemption? These are not redemptive acts, unless you want to change the word or the meaning of that word. Because certainly when we look at this word, redemption, it's the furthest thing from redemption as we know it. Then there's the crucifixion or the crux that something has to be crucified. Now, what's interesting is the Romans crucified people on trees, but they cut it in the form of a cross. So when they hung our people from trees, this is part of their genetic memory bank. This was no accident. When you see our people hanging from trees, this is no accident. This is consistent with their genetic memory bank. It's not consistent with yours, and thus why you should not wear a cross around your neck. Because the cross, again, represents <clears throat> death, okay? 
and you see the majority of crosses other than around the necks of our people you see them in a cemetery okay um there are four types of crosses there are the greek the latin the celtic and the druid okay so let's <clears throat> let's move on to our next uh our fourth symbol which is a, a very, very important symbol. Um, I recommend uh, a very important book done by one of our scholars, Dr. Anthony Browder, Egypt on the Potomac. That is a great book to read. Um, he talks about the symbols as well and how they are correct, corrupted. But the one that he really highlighted on that's, um, that's in uh, Washington, D.C. now, Okay, well, it, it called the obelisk. Okay, this is what the Greeks called it. This is the name they changed it. But our people called it a Tekken or a Tekkenu. Okay, and uh, it is seen on also on the dollar bill that uh, this obelisk, um, what they call it, and change the energy of it. Okay. They have the largest one. And so they took, there were 1,200 Tekkenus in, uh, in Egypt or, or in the motherland, because there were some in Nubia as well, that they took, I'm sorry, they were in Kenya. But they took, there's only 150 of them remaining. The, there's one in Aswan, uh, Egypt, that is the largest that was ever constructed and it was never finished. And it's still there to this day because nobody can move it. Now, one of the things that they um, were baffled about, and anybody that's used a microscope on a hot day and put it, a piece of paper on it on a cement or any type of solid object, can start a fire through that magnet. Well, our people perfected that they would cut these huge granite uh, objects using the sun. They constructed a device that was like a magnet that when the sun shone down on there, cause they didn't have electric saws. So you got people trying to figure out, well, how did they do it? because they used the sun and and they had this big powerful magnet thing that operated as a magnet that would cut into the granite but they can't figure that out um but this technu what's important or this obelisk as they have changed the name and the narrative of it was uh a phallus a black male uh, virility of black male virility and masculinity and uh it was first seen and conceptualized with the story of osiris okay or asar first king of kemi um, and and that story that has been plagiarized um it's a story i won't go into it but it's based on that story and uh the phallus was the only part of his body that uh, Aset or Isis could not find to reconnect. So she had a virgin birth. This is where this story was plagiarized from, where she was impregnated by the spirit of Osiris. This is where this concept was plagiarized into narrative form that you know, that you take as, you know, gospel truth. But this story comes out of that. But this phallus is a symbol of black male virility or masculinity. It was also used um, as a sundial because our people told time by the shadows it created when the sun moved at different points in the sky. Uh, around, you know, the obelisk would cast the shadow so our people would be able to tell time. It's also a symbol of resurrection and this is where this um, <clears throat> story about resurrect, 
but it was uh now don't talk to the kids about this but this is uh you know uh, symbolic of the black male phallus being resurrected this is this is what it meant i mean um, i'm sorry being uh <laughs> you know what i mean so uh this is where this concept came from of uh, being erect and so that's where this concept came from uh, but this was a very um, a very significant uh, symbol of our people. Uh, and again, they can't figure out to this day. Um, I read somewhere once where the Japanese went over there and they were perplexed as to how this was done. Well, I think the Chinese as well, and they couldn't duplicate that. Um, and the, all of these symbols are some of the most ancient symbols that even affect us today and that narratives were created from. Uh, the fifth one here is uh, the Eye of Horus, okay, uh, Ra, the sun god. It's also associated with Jehuti and Thoth. But our people, the name that our people gave to it was Wajet, okay, where <clears throat> All of all of these concepts were connected through uh, mathematics, through the pyramid, through the geometrical figure, uh, through symbols. Um, but they also established fractions around this. Okay, um, and the fractions actually, people say we have five senses, but actually. The, the sixth sense that we have is uh, what they refer to as a paranormal sense, but it's just basic thought, okay, um, that, that we can create in our minds through our pineal gland. But um, touch, the first sense, represented 164 of the eye of Horus. Taste represented 132 or 32nd of the eye of Horus. Hearing represented uh, 1 16th. Thought represented 1 8th. And sight represented 1 4th. But smell, which is the strongest sense tied to memory is smell, represented 1 half. And <clears throat> it was also representative of sacrifice. That's why today, you know, we, we must look at the concept of sacrifice in a different um, way. Just like you have a servant like Lance that has to make many sacrifices that you don't see, okay? And uh, it's also uh, based on healing. So the Eye of Horus was like, a, we looked at it as something that provided everything we needed, you know, in our, and this is why you see it again, you see that symbol um, everywhere. I think Lance had a, a nice uh, symbol of it in uh, your studio, the one you had before. But that symbol has been plagiarized so much throughout the world. But you, as you can see, it, there were even different dimensions of it based on our senses. Um, and then one, uh, the last two, one of the um, two of the oldest, before I move into the images, two of the oldest uh, symbols, the wasp scepter that you saw um, in uh, every, and, and also, I'm sorry, the eye of Horus also meant restoration. Okay. So we knew that um, this principle of restoration meant that no matter what happened, um, you know, you can actually restore things, okay, by taking certain steps. Um, but the Wa Scepter, which is one of the oldest symbols, whenever you saw one of uh, the Pharaoh or a king, this accompanied them. And, and this was a symbol of strength, divinity, power, and most of all, it represented um, the creator's power, or as they looked at Ra's power, 
the sun god power uh, on earth by the pharaoh or the king. So this was a very significant, uh, even uh, one of our greatest uh, female uh, pharaohs, Hepsushet, she actually had one. And this was probably one of the first times where this was, it wasn't questioned by the people there, but it was questioned by uh, the people that always seek to divide us, that they call Egyptologists, that um, basically brought the fact that here, here you had one of the most powerful pharaohs, whether she was a female or not, but the only thing you could see is that she had the scepter that was associated and the um, beard that was put on associated with masculinity. And when that had nothing to do with that. Um, the last one we're going to look at is uh, Lev, which our people refer to as Lev, um, which represented the heart. In fact, um, it was the only, uh, when they mummified people, it was the only organ that they didn't remove. So all the organs that they put in separate jars, which in their cells had a meaning, they didn't take the heart out because they knew that the heart had to be weighed, okay, against the feather of Mayat. So, so again, our people always dealt with the concept of righteousness. And this principle was intertwined in everything um, that we did. So as you can see, um, these cultures, these, are, I'm sorry, these symbols were very important to our con uh, cultures. And uh, the concepts that were derived from them um, have been used by the Hebrews, the Greeks, the Latins, and here in English. Okay. So um, let's look at modern day uh, symbols that influence us today, that influence us today uh, socially. Uh, we just talked about the cross, but let's talk about the social status, okay, or the symbols of social status, like cars, houses, and uh, titles. Now, again, uh, uh, a house is an appropriate uh, symbol, okay? And it's appropriate because it shows, like our people build houses in antiquity. Um, or to quote John Henry Clark, before uh, the Europeans uh, had a house with a window, <laughs> okay, and a shoe uh, on their feet. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that uh, social status is so important to our people um, because of, you know, cars, uh, the people that have this um, love for cars have also um, placed it in high, um, you know, standard for our people because uh, pe the car that you drive is a symbol of your status. And again, I have no problem with that. I'm just saying that um, this is something that um, means a lot to our people today because of the narratives that we've been given about self-worth. And then titles, okay? This is something too that people that come to this country that um, build their businesses off of our people, they don't have titles. In fact, many of them are uneducated. But these are the people that are producing this tremendous wealth for their own cultures. But when you see them sitting in a store or sitting at a cart, you laugh at them because you've been taught that this is something that doesn't uh, make you feel, you know, that you're successful. But it's not about feelings. Our people need to get out of this, basing everything on feelings. It's not about feelings. So um, I mentioned the uh, obelisk, which is a techno. Um, but the obelisk, this, uh, the symbol of it today has been usurped. Okay, now it's a big, tall, uh, white colored phallus that's in the center of the seat of power. 
in Washington, D.C. Okay, we can see that. Um, and there's no connection to our people. I guarantee you that uh, 80% of our children don't know that that obelisk meant uh, black male masculinity. I guarantee you that because the way the narrative that has been written for that, when they change the name, this is another thing we have to comprehend and understand. When they change the name, okay, they also change the spirit associated with that name and the meaning, the original concept. Okay, and so they usurp that power or they take that power from that object, that symbol. Um, the pyramid, we talked about that. Now, the rainbow, okay. Uh, oh, and I want to say, um, I, I may not comment on, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm watching, you know, focus on what I'm doing. But I, I also do um, see uh, the comment of, of some of, of the very intelligent people in the chat room. Uh, like uh, Indigo King, uh, Master Glam, uh, Gina G, I believe, Riri, um, Queen Red Pill, uh, Lonnie, uh, Mr. Holman. So I, I see these names and, and I appreciate the fact that they're engaged and what's going on because energy goes both ways, okay? And uh, the teacher is also the student. So, you know, we get, sometimes we get inflated with certain things, but the fact of the matter is we're in serious times, okay? And Kwame, okay, uh, people like that, uh, you guys, uh, I think one of the guys' name is uh, Yapo. I can't uh, think of his first name starts with an I, I believe. Uh, Levi, all of you people, I know that it's important to recognize people. And forgive me if I haven't recognized you, but at the same time, I know that you're engaged with what we're trying to accomplish. And, and I'm very appreciative of that. So if I miss your name, trust and believe, I know you're there um, for us and uh, helping us reciprocate everything that we're putting out. Um, and, to, and to get to some of the negative symbols that are out there today, the Confederate flag and Confederate uh, general statutes on horses, because this symbol more than anything is a reminder of a period that was bad for our people. And that's why I can understand the call for pulling them down because it really does um, have a, a psychological effect um, you know, on people. So I'm not going to get into, you know, the other parts of that. And then we have the Statute of Liberty, which is uh, a symbol of freedom. Okay, and when you think about what most people don't know is the original Statute of free Freedom that was given to the French was a black lady um, in braids. Um, but, you know, again, see, what we know is white, people and racism and that type of prejudice, for the most part, didn't exist beyond the 500 years that, um, that the Europeans brought it here, that type of racism. Because when you look back into antiquity, um, there were um, uh, black people that were popes, that were part of the hierarchy of the church. Uh, and, in uh, Spain, the Moors, before they started removing it. In fact, European, uh, in Europe, they don't in America, but Europe has more black deities than anywhere in the world. Um, and, and that's still associated with, um, in fact, matter of fact, the Moors spent almost 800 years in, uh, in Spain. In fact, Queen Charlotte, the one that they plagiarized is a melanated woman, which a lot of them were. See, but but that type the type of racism we know here in the Western world wasn't uh 
didn't exist at that time. Okay, so uh, that's something to think about. But uh, the, the concept of freedom and the statute of liberty um, has changed because I can remember a time when uh, there, people did have, coming from other countries, did have hope of finding a better life here um, back during that time. But now, you know, it's like a symbol of death because all of the um, degraded things that exist in our society are prevalent. And so people come in here, it's like coming to the mythical uh, Babylon or Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, then we have the symbol of the church. Now, um, again, I know our people have an emotional attachment to this, so I'm not gonna really, we talk about this all the time. But now, the church was, originally was like a safe haven for our people in a lot of ways. A lot of uh, ways that the church was used back during that time to show black people how to register to vote, to organize, to plan things. It was used the way it was supposed to be used. Our people worshiped there, but they also, you know, gathered there to plan and organize. And it wasn't until um, this evil we know as uh, prosperity gospel started tricking our people and associating fiat with what they believe. That was real, a really cruel trick. It's still prevalent today. But initially our people used churches to help plan things to move ourselves forward. Um, and, and then, you know, everything was laid on the table. You know, there, if there was a deacon board, then the deacon board was right there sitting with the people, um, letting them know if there was a passage that he was right there telling the people what was going on. They weren't left in the dark. Um, and then we have the institutions of learning. These, this is another great symbol um, that we associate. When our people talk about learning, they associate, uh, say, an institution like Harvard as, as um, you know, the shining uh, institution of learning on a hill when there is no um, comparison to, uh, to Timbuktu, our great institutions in Mali, uh, like the University of St. Korea, uh, there, there is no um, comparison to the first universities in the world, okay? I believe uh, there were, uh, 80,000 people at one time. And then the Greeks, they used to go there and study as well. So you see, our, our people have to know this history because then you can clearly see what they have done to us. This is why they get so angry when we uh, want to discuss our true history because they have hidden so much. And then finally, um, Native American headdresses that the $5 Indians have stolen. Because when you look back in history, um, in the early parts of, of um, this country, um, our people, who they um, want to call uh, Indians, our native people wore these headdress, okay? I've seen them. Uh, we, we know that on the East Coast, particularly in places uh, like South Carolina, Georgia, you know, our people, they wore these. So <clears throat> much of the, uh, again, the point I wanted to make is that everything that I have um, basically laid out to you is, um, and Dr. A did a brilliant job laying this out in terms of the two separate cultures and the way of um, indoctrination where we have the uh, European, uh, Eurocentric indoctrination, and then we have the African mind. But everything that I mentioned to you is based on um, uh, Eurocentric uh, way of seeing the world, which you do too. Okay, let's, let's just say it for what it is. So now let's move into uh, images, moving right along. 
Let's move into the psychosocial impact of these images in terms of what's in our subconscious mind, the archetypes, which I mentioned that 99% of those archetypes are white, whether we want to accept this or not, okay? And this is why it's so um, important that you share the workbook with the children so that we can help remove those archetypes because those um, symbols and the way that um, we are taught in nature will immediately remove those. So the first image that I mentioned, Jesus Christ, or what we know as Jesus Christ, uh, this, this image has done more, okay, to regulate um, the African mind to an oppressed mind spiritually than any other uh, image that has ever been created. Um, I can talk for days about this. You know, we've all seen, um, Lance did a great job of putting out uh, some videos uh, in regards to that image. Um, because no matter where you go, that image is very powerful in, in the psyche of our people. Um, my my uh, concern is that this image is going to have the same effect on our young people that it has had on us. Um, and we can't shake this image no matter what. Black people still get angry uh, when we talk about Yeshua, um, the real person that, that lived, personality that lived, that you attribute this personality to. A lot of people get, of our people still get angry over this. Um, then let's talk about the standards of beauty. Now, I had mentioned this before, that the height of mental, what I call um, menticide or reverse metamorphosis, is you've taken um, you've taken the uh, the uh, what is the word I'm looking for? So the recessive gene okay, in nature. That's the word I'm looking for. And you have been through narratives and magazines and TV and social media and any type of medium where you can observe this recessive standard of beauty, this has become your standard of beauty um, where you would do anything to look like that, not knowing that you are the real standard of beauty. Man, when I see some of those pictures from our sisters in the mother, motherland, that have not um, compromised their beauty with, with all the things that, uh, that our women here use. And I'm not putting our women down, so they're beautiful as well. All I'm saying is that what's associated with the standard of beauty is not you. It's a plagiarized standard of beauty that's based on um, uh, recessive genes. And this is a genetic, um, lie that has to be told to our young girls in particular. Oh, don't dress them like y'all do. <laughs> don't put all that crap on them. Okay, let them dress the way that is appropriate for them and <clears throat> that they can see the beauty that exists in them. But the main thing that they will get, this is one of the reasons why I put the picture on the workbook is you'll be surprised what happens when uh, when they see someone that looks like them that they don't see in public schools or in any of the books they're reading or given, okay, on the cover. They're on the cover of, of this workbook. That was something that was very important to me. So um, even if it's in the background behind me, the fact that they'll see a black face and then they'll see the um, image associated with it. And I guarantee they're gonna ask you, who's that mommy or who's that daddy? And this is what you want. You wanna engage them so they can think. Okay. Um, so yeah, the standard of beauty has to be dealt with because too many of our women, and I know every time you turn on the TV, that's what you see. I know, I see it too, no matter where you go. Um, but again, it's up to us to embrace our beauty and to put it out there. Uh, 
media images. Okay, propaganda. This is a big one here. The image that they have of our young men, I've heard them referred to as super predators. Okay, again, uh, we're talking 10, maybe in our case, maybe 15% of our young people. Okay. But we know this is based on the narratives that they are being rewarded with fiat. So they'll put these images, they'll upload these images that they have told our children are images of success, these negative behaviors. And no, you're, it doesn't make you a man because you call yourself a gangster or a thug. It makes you look like a fool when you're the original primordial seed of the planet around here acting like a two-year-old. You know, this is the type of stuff that we're responsible. White men are not responsible for teaching our young men this. We are. Okay. Too much of this energy now dominates whenever you turn on social media. You know, too much of this image is dominating our people. This is not, this is not what our people, um, this is not in, in the conceptual uh, images of our people. This is not. This has been created by um, inorganic beings in order to project you, okay, as something that's, uh, what's the term, a menace to society. When the real, we know who the real menace to society are, okay. So it's important, um, um, this is why it's important to purchase uh, uh, art from Lance, okay? We have to, we, we have to show our uh, children who they are. Uh, I'll turn this around and maybe you guys can see, uh, let's see. No, no, I can't see. Well, maybe you can see the Bob Marley. Um, but uh, again, the images that we show our children, there should be a big image of Frederick Douglass uh, in the home. A young lady I dated uh, for years uh, is, is like a long distance type thing. Uh, she had a big picture, her parents had a big picture of uh, Frederick Douglass right there when you walked in the front door. And see, this is why, and all of her children, you know, they embraced our culture, uh, even though they were exposed mainly because of their social status to another culture. But she made sure that they had this representation. And you know, I must say, uh, to see, Lance, some of the art I've seen uh, that you do, man, it is uh, very needed uh, in black households and can create a dialogue for our people because we don't like to see characters of, of things about our people that deal with reality. So, um, you know, whether you like it or not, the images we need to be dealing with are images of reality, especially the ones that um, affect our children, because these images, especially like the ones Lance create, shows the hypocrisy and the propaganda out here against our people, because they are getting all of their narratives from what they see online. Okay, this is where they're getting all of their teachings from. Like Malcolm said, only a fool would allow their children to be taught by the enemy or those that oppress them. Uh, news stories. You know, these news stories that come out every day to keep you all stressed out, okay? You have to clap back against some of this stuff. You know, the reason why um, we have these young white uh, males filled with hate is because they're taught this. They're not born with this and that they're out here screwing this hate. Um, the thing with our young brothers that's out here committing all these senseless acts, okay? These really senseless acts against not only our people, 
although you commit 90% of them, huh? you know, just in society at large, you don't have to do this, okay? You don't have to do this. This is, this is insanity to see our, our you know, our, our men in their warrior stage when they should be thinking about establishing uh, uh, institutions and, and um, building, uh, creating something that our people can use. We have to get them back on track. Too many of them want to be thugs and gangsters, but this is what they have been paid for. And see, as long as we glorify fiat, this is where their minds are going to go. But we have to correct that now. I think, not think I know, one of the major um, things that we've suffered from, from uh, the fathers not being in the home, is the proper male discipline of our children. And black men, we have to take responsibility for this. Because when, when I was growing up, not just my brothers, my coaches, you know, all of them, uh, other uh, people, friends of the family and people in the community. You, if you was doing something you didn't, we wasn't supposed to do, they would correct you right there on the spot. And then, even though they didn't have telephones, they would make sure that your people found out about. Hey, guess what I saw him doing today or her doing today. So we tra we traveled or we we wasn't out here gossiping. This nigga, this and this nigga ain't that. You know, we were about building our community and keeping the lines of communication open in a positive way. And the kids, the children that grew up, they were very secure. Now, we didn't have a lot, but our communities were very secure in the sense that people knew that they were black. They weren't um, ashamed to be black. They weren't ashamed of African people and all this nonsense putting black people against F. Can't you see what they're doing? I get so sick of this, okay? African people and black people are the same people, or what you call black people here, okay? Now stop all this craziness. If you don't know anything about genetics, then you need to know. We're all the same people, okay? Just because you're in a different region of the world doesn't change this fact. So let's stop this nonsense. And this, we spend too much time, okay, like you were saying in the beginning, Lance, on foolishness, on stuff that don't even make sense, okay? Who cares if you, you are black, this or that? We cannot be hating on Africa, okay? Now you can you, you can say all this crazy stuff, you know, creating all this division and, and all this. First of all, the continents weren't always separated, okay? We were on every continent on this planet. In fact, Africa is the only land base that's rooted in the ground. All the rest of them, they move, okay? So prior to that happening, okay, you didn't need a boat to say walk to. People say, well, how did they walk uh, thousands of miles to get uh, to where they wanted to get to? Well, you know, they were on land. They didn't need boats during that time. Our people been on this earth a long time, <laughs> okay? Hundreds of thousands of years. And just because the Europeans gave narratives about things, um, you know, less than 6,000 years ago. That doesn't change real history. So stop it. Stop this foolishness. This is only causing us to, you know, be down in the quagmire and quicksand more. Okay. We don't need to be worried about that. Okay. The other thing, too, is... Um, these same symbols that you find in Kemet and Nubia, you find in the caves here in America. I've seen them. Okay, so stop it. We're talking about culture here. We're not talking about you trying to claim territory. Okay, we're still in this same mindset. Where are you from, man? Who cares? Okay, you are the original people of the planet, and that's all you need to know. 
Okay. Um, so this, the other thing is what I was just talking about, the image um, that's being projected through these news stories, this propaganda and these media images of our worst 10 to 15%, it's in all cultures, but they don't put them on television. They don't put our bright young people on TV. This is not what they want. You know why? Because they haven't repented in their heart. The image that they want to set before the world about black men is that we're lazy, that we're drug addicts, that we're alcoholics, that we, we don't build anything, that we, we're only concerned with destroying things, that we are super predators. Okay, you, you take our 10% and highlight all of the um, negative traits that exist in everyone that live on this planet. Okay, there are no perfect people. But why do you highlight these things about our young people. If they are, it's because of, of what has been made, what they have been made into in this society. Okay, this is why, um, you know, I always like to discuss the nature nurture controversy. This is a very relevant concept and controversy. Are you affected more by your natural environment, the home where you were raised and reared? and their beliefs, yes, 100% you are. But you're also um, uh, impacted by nurture, by how you're nurtured in the environment you're nurtured in. So when you're nurtured in an environment that spears straight evil and hate towards you, there, there is trauma that you have to um, deal with, okay, and process. So, Back up off our children, man. Okay, back up off of them. Because you haven't repented. You're still teaching kids to walk into a school with AK 47 and kill up a whole bunch of people. Okay. Uh, the other thing, too, is um, we have children that are innovators of science, math, and history. Right now, I've studied about them. But these things are being hid in the news stories. Okay, the propaganda in the media. And we're labeled as socially destructive people. So everybody that comes to this country, that's how you they see the black man. Okay, they see us as a socially destructive people when we are the ones that are directly responsible for all of the things that are um, enjoyed in the Western world. And that includes Canada and Europe. South America, Central America, the Caribbean, and anywhere you set foot on this planet. So let's stop with this. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, finally, I just want to, I just want to say to our people now, it's time. Okay, it's time. Okay, we, we can no longer continue to carry on in the way that we're carrying on. Okay, we're going to be slaves again. And when I say we're going to be, because the new oppressor, okay, the Eurasian, they have the same attitude towards you that this system and that white people have per perpetuated towards us. I don't know why you don't want to recognize this. They are the ones where we're spending a large amount of our money, particularly in the area of beauty products. We have got to get a hold of this. If we are going to spend this kind of money on beauty products, then we need to train our young people, um, our young women, how to get into the nail business. If we're going to, seriously, we need to train them to be entrepreneurs in that business. Okay, because I don't think our women are going to ever stop. Um, 86%, I don't, I don't think it's ever going to stop. So, okay, the old adage, you can't beat it, join it. Okay, it's already there. 
you're just giving your money to the wrong people when we can train our own young people to go into these trades. Okay, forget about a title. They don't have to have no title to be, how about being a founder of something? Okay. This is what we should um, push them forward to be. And uh, Brother Lance, I have an appointment at four o'clock. But yeah, okay. uh, yeah, but uh, I, uh, I, I sincerely hope, brother, that um, we as a people now say enough is enough. We, we, we're going to take responsibility for this. Because I'm going to tell you something, brother. We have some brilliant people now. We have some br in this chat room. We have brilliant people. It's just that for some reason, I know the reason, but we feel like it's more important that people see us as good Christians than anything else. This is something that still exists with our people, okay? And I don't have all the answers for this. All I know is that we've got to start embracing blackness, the African mind. We have to do this. We have to do this. So with that, brother, peace and love. And uh, I hope our people got something out of the presentation today. Looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, listening to uh, the other good programs you have coming on this week. And also with uh, you, uh, I, I kind of miss the, uh, you know, the anthill and the, uh, the uh, what was the one, the rooftop perspectives. That, that really showed a side of you that, that people need too. You know, those those were good. So I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, brother. Yeah, no, some of your best, uh, I went back and, and looked at one the other day, some of your best inspirations. Because a lot of times it, it, it ain't even about knowledge, it's about inspiration. And uh, a lot of your inspirations from the anthill and the, um, the rooftop perspectives were, were really heartfelt. I, th I, I feel like uh, the people really benefited from that. Yeah. That's from the heart, brother. You know, it's, it's always oh, yeah. from the heart. Sometimes yeah. I wake up and don't know what I'm going to say. I don't yeah. push my, but it comes to me. And then I, I just draw from what I've experienced and, just yeah. flow. I'll get on topic, yeah. get back on top, start out one way, end up one way. It's a journey yeah. for me. It's like thinking out loud, actually. So it's not like... That's a good way uh, of putting it. Yeah. yeah it's like, well, I'm going to be up here and I'm going to see this great thing. And nah, it's just heart to heart. Sometimes a little sad, sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm yeah. enthusiastic. A little joy, a little pain. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's jokes but you don't allow that to box you in and see so many of our people... We're, we're so concerned about our image to the system that, right. you know, it stifles us. And even dealing with each other, we want to present a, a side that, that is uh, accepted uh, with this system and present right. ourselves as something that we're not. But um, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. man. So I really appreciate that about you, brother. Just keep it coming, man. Well, I'm we got more coming tomorrow <laughs> and the next day and the next day. Yes, you know, sir. It's just gonna yes, flow like sir. that, and it's a beautiful thing. And I, yes, I thank sir. you, brother, for the, for the commitment, the hard work, the work that you did even before we connected. We were on a righteous collision course, and this absolutely the peanut butter cups, the chocolate, <laughs> and, and, and the yeah. peanut butter. We came up with something great, and that's, that's right. why I think Monday night, you know, people know what to expect as far as the teaching is concerned, but. There's so much depth that you bring. We don't know what to expect, but we know we're going to walk away better incrementally every day, every Monday that we have a chance to talk. And mm -hmm. you have so much love. love, love they love you, brother. Yes, Your name sir. is reaching far and wide. And that's my dedication to you. You did the work. It's my job to help get it out there and yeah, be here. I, like yeah, I appreciate you, uh, like I said before, putting the brand out there. Because, again, yeah. you, know, the, you know, people look at it. Oh, Illuminati. Yeah, okay. Illuminati all you want. We, we <laughs> claiming our symbols from the motherland that you're not taking. Right. No. no. 
Okay, brother Lance, I better get going. Yes, I got to drive a little ways. I know you do, brother. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Yes, definitely. And everybody, much love. We got more work coming. And um, it's never going to stop until the big man or the or the loving mother calls me home. And even then, I'll still be trying to do, do stuff and get stuff out there, right? But anyway, much love to you all. And play a little song before we sign off here. Peace. Take it away, take it away, feeling too good to me. Chilling all day, all in your space is where I wanna be. Here in this room, what did you do? I just can't get enough. Too caught up in your love. I've been trying to forget, but you won't let me. Something in my brain wants you. I've been hanging by myself. Asking for help, but nothing seems to work on you. Yeah, you always make me feel like oh yeah. You never leave my thoughts alone. Yeah, you. You're the reason I'm going out of my mind. I just can't stop thinking about you. When you're away, nights are sleepless Do we need space? Yeah, maybe you're brave Boy, you're my weakness Give and we take the love that we make It's my favorite drug Too caught up in your love I've been trying to forget But you won't let me Something in my brain holds you I've been hanging by myself for help, but nothing seems to work on you, yeah, you always make me feel like, oh yeah, you, you never leave my thoughts alone, yeah, you, you're the reason I'm going out of my mind, I just can't stop thinking about you.
we were in paradise And now, every time I fall asleep I dream of what we used to be I don't understand it, somehow I didn't see It took me far too long to realize That I take your love for granted
to the head. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Can't be a real nigga, man. You cancel. Fuck the whole system, need the shit dismantled. Coppers treat a nigga like the utmost wanted. Trying to rule the block, but don't know what goes on it. News got a story with a new take on me. Carrying out the window with the screw face on me. But I know that God love me when my blunt burn. 95 degrees and I can't get sunburned. Wonder when your government don't make me legal. Burn the whole city if I can't be equal. Get off my dick, please, Brad, I earn that. 400 years, how you still ain't learned? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Shout out to the crackers trying to gentrify the genre. Tell them free my niggas, middle finger to your honor. In the days coming down to seconds on the timer. Goofy niggas still trying to purchase that designer. About to buy a child, but learn to grow my own food. Cause I don't like the look that get me in the whole foods. And when you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. But it ain't on me now, I'm limping cause my dick heavy. But ain't shit sweet, niggas think we thin. My whole attitude on MC Ren. It's my neighborhood now, Bob, I bought. That 400 years, how you still ain't caught? That? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It's a brand new day. Gotta take it on my way. Gotta take it on my way. It's a brand new day. Gotta take it on my way. Gotta take it on my way. Take a look out my window, see the birds in the trees. Their songs inspire me to sing a sweet melody. How do they do it? Not a care and so free. Wanna step into their world? Who holds the key? It's a brand new day. Gotta take it on my way. Gotta take it on my way. It's a brand new day. Gotta take it on my way. Gotta take it on my way.
Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our name, our language, our culture, our God, and our religion? Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, for us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and misgiving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So, my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's check back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly that before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast, eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw, till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Marco Polo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China, he took silk and gunpowder. From India, he took jute, manganese, and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold. From the Mideast, he took barrels of oil untold, raping, robbing, and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So, my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. America, we were living in the east, by the Nile River, we were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality, we wore silken robes, slippers of gold, we were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told, now we are the poorest of the poor, nobody wants us at their door. My friend, it's easy to tell White man heaven is black man hell When the white man came to America He told the Indian I am your white brother He said, red man, I'll treat you the best Yet and still he pushed the Indian further west With his white woman and fire water Tricks and lies he stole America The original owner of this nation Is cooped up on a reservation So my friend it's easy to tell White man heaven, black man hell he needed someone to work the land His back was too weak He needed you, black man So he commissioned Sir John Hawkins To commit the world's most grievous sin To take a man who's born to be free And bring him down 
sell a man as merchandise on his body put a price oh my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven is a black man hell For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. 